I'm recording. So I, will, I will scoot back one additional session here and just kind of give you a recap from that point so that everybody's on the same page. Um, so you guys were back when you were um, being held hostage at the uh, Hellcats, Hellcats compound. Um, you kind of got a chance to talk to Boda, who was the Lord of the Hellcats, self-proclaimed, and he basically roped you into his uh, his plot um, to determine what was happening with one of his trade routes to Memnon. Um, and he needed somebody to persuade the Flaming Fists um, to stop destroying his boats and uh, basically killing his slaves so that he could continue that trade that was there. Um, you also, at the same time, ran into um, Zetrix, who was uh, some sort of a, maybe court mage or something, um, who also kind of dragged you into his plot to overthrow Boda um, and told you that he uh, needed you to kill him um, so that uh, he could take over, ultimately. So you guys tentatively agreed to both, basically. And uh, Boda promptly ushered you out and said there was a boat coming the following day. You guys left there. You found uh, you saw something interesting as you were leaving the compound that there were, looked like there was a new batch of slaves that were coming in, and they kind of were almost acting like zombies. You know, they were not fighting at all. They didn't seem to be. They were kind of just shambling along and following along as things happened. Um, you guys headed out, and not very long after you left. That first night out outside of the compound actually is when the fog rolled in and um, you were attacked. Um, something that cast these gigantic ballista that had chains attached to it on either side of the ship and tore the ship in half, essentially. Um, from there, you guys kind of um, were able to get um, the crew into boats um, and head towards the direction of one of the ballista, which ultimately took you to an island. Um, so you went to this island and kind of went ashore and kind of began scouting it out. Um, you eventually, after a long walk along the coast, about five hours in one direction, you came across, uh, your, your scouts ran back to you and came, they said that there was, you needed to hide and this, and these entire um, garrison of soldiers came marching down, down the beach, headed into the forest, you guys followed them in. You found out they stopped in a clearing that uh, had some kind of an old overgrown stone circle that was there. <clears throat> you walked up to the stone circle after they had kind of left the area and saw that it didn't, had some sort of writing on it. Uh, Owen decided that it was too tempting, reached down, touched the, hmm. touched the, <laughs> the actual, which you found out later was a glyph, which exploded, sending light, lightning everywhere, knocking Alundo unconscious on the footsteps of death and uh you guys found uh while you were waiting for him to regain consciousness started rifling through his pack and came came across a book which had some very interesting information in it um the big thing that stuck out to you was that uh it was actually penned or authored by alundo same person you were traveling with you assume um so everything after that, you put everything back in the bag, and just as you were kind of getting things together, you heard someone yell out, Surrender! Uh, after that, um, you found yourself surrounded by um, a large group of exactly the same soldiers <laughs> that had come down the beach. They had apparently had returned. Um, and uh, upon seeing that everyone had a slave collar, they demanded that the Minotaur release the slaves he basically talked back, did nothing nothing cooperative, and they ended up killing him on the spot. Once he did that, they did that, uh, the collars fell away off of all the beast folk, and um, they didn't know what to do. They kind of just cowered, kind of pulled themselves in a little bit and crunched down, didn't really know how to, how to handle themselves. Um, from there, you guys decided it would best course of action was to just go with them, so they kind of confiscated your weapons. Um, and took you to um, to a, a further down the beach to um, this gigantic walled area. And you guys saw this huge wall that was 
um, 20 foot high. You couldn't see around it. They walked to a gate, opened the gate, and as you walked in, you saw um, this, this walled area was absolutely massive, probably more than a mile across, and you could see nothing but just green grass across the entire center. Um, over to the, to the left as you walked in, there, was, um, there were some ruined buildings. Uh, you walked in, the path kind of led its way to those ruined buildings, um, but you, the entire column of soldiers and you guys ignored those altogether and continued walking forward until you passed through some sort of a barrier that you weren't expecting, and all of a sudden you came across, across a bustling encampment that was here. Um, they took you into this camp, took you to a holding cell. Eventually they, they, they did treat you very well, but eventually they took you out and uh, took you to go see a, the lieutenant commander, uh, who ended up being, his name was Leeward Hillock. And um, he explained that he was basically in charge of the Flaming Fists for the entire um, Sword Coast. So a pretty, pretty powerful guy here. You proceeded to explain to uh, Alundo's chagrin <laughs> exactly everything that had happened to you guys. So how you got there... The, what was happening with Boda and with Zetrix, the entire plot, everything that was happening. Alundo kind of wanted you guys to play that a little closer to the vest, but uh, Strider was having none of it. And Owen, you weren't helping any either. So, um, you just, no, no, you pretty much just spilled the beans on everything that's going on. But um, Hillock also let you know that uh, uh, he was very interested in all that, set up a meeting with you for the following morning. Um, you guys kind of got back together. Um, with him the following day. During that time, um, uh, Whisper actually did some, of course, skulking around, talking to a few people, and came across some interesting information, which I don't know if he shared this with you guys or not, but he was planning on it. He just sent me that earlier. But um, as he was skulking around, there's a manor house in the center of this encampment, um, and he was ab able to see that... Um, there was some, a messenger that had gone directly from the lieutenant commander to the manor house, and he was able to kind of follow his route and watch him throughout the house and ended up dropping off this um, this communication to someone who was seated in a high back chair um, inside the manor house. Um, he also overheard um, a couple of the guards talking about how um, this Master Kralin, who was the... Um, apparently is the benefactor of this entire expedition of this whole um, contest to um, to eliminate the trade route. He's funding it, and apparently he may be in some financial problems because um, they didn't, the soldiers didn't seem extremely happy, and they seem to be talking about maybe pay that was uh, a little late. So um, he told you guys that. After that, you guys had, uh, you had the meeting with um, the lieutenant commander, um, Hillock, and he informed you that uh, he actually had a plan that he had devised along with um, uh, his lieutenant, Jeffrey, which was the one that uh, actually originally captured you guys out in the forest. And then he also introduced you to a halfling whose name was Mitha. And she, uh, she explained uh, the three of them had come up with this plan and we're going to, um, we're hopefully going to, um, use you guys to kind of deliver this uh, killing blow. They basically had devised a device with a small chest that's kind of attuned to Boda. That uh, if he is the one that opens this box, it will um, it will explode, essentially. Um, and kill, and they, they assure you that it'll definitely kill him if he is the one that actually opens it. So the difficult part is, is that if he's not the one that opens it, and it becomes inert, and it's no longer, no longer functional. Um, and so, it had about a twenty meter death radius, right? Yeah. So they said 20, 20 feet is what they said. Yeah. Twenty from, feet. Yeah. So it's um it's a big explosion. So, um, you guys kind of talked to him about it. He, um, Mitha is more than willing to to uh, explain whatever you guys like about that. She seems extremely excited about the entire device in general. So, um. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jeffrey, who seems to be um, a mage of some sort, by the way, he uh, he made himself out to look like a commanding general type while you guys were in the woods. And um, once you got into the encampment, he kind of melted his 
his disguise, and he seems to be a a um, a very average-looking um, human in uh, light blue robes, and that's what he he wears. So he's uh, he seems to be pretty skilled in illusion, and he lets you know that um, if you were, if anybody's to open the box, it's going to look like it's completely empty, and that's what they've kind of um, programmed in or or set up as as an illusionary piece. That's with that. So. Um, Hillock then tells you guys that uh, he will provide a ship for you guys to return you to the Hellcats compound um, that's going to be virtually identical to what uh, they ripped in half on you, <laughs> essentially. Um, and then it'll it'll be arriving in a day. So you have a day. So And that's kind of where you guys left it, if I remember right. What's, what's arriving in a day? It's a... Say that again? What's arriving in a day? The ship, the, the replacement ship to take you guys back to the Hellcats combo. Okay. Uh, what, what, what does this replacement ship look like? Who are you asking, by the way? Uh, probably who's ever given us a ship. I didn't okay, know about the ship coming, actually. I didn't remember. Yeah, Maybe. yeah. Yeah, Hillock. Um, so, yeah, we'll say, we'll just kind of start from the end of the meeting, if that if that works for you guys, so you can still ask questions or whatever that's happening. Didn't we start exploring, or is that not after this? Didn't we end this meeting already and start exploring around, or no? Uh, you did that in between, before you had the meeting with them. That following morning, you guys went and talked to the cook. Well, and we stopped talking. We weren't still talking to him, were we? Uh, I don't know. We, if, if you guys have questions, you guys can go back to him. That's fine. Okay, yeah. go, just go uh, back to it then, because yeah. I don't remember. That's fine. We can just say you asked him, too. That's no big deal. It's not like it's going to affect anything. Yeah. So. Um, he says... Uh, Yes, it's a, it's a cog ship. It's 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 the same the same style and the same design as the one that uh, we destroyed upon your arrival. There are, there are there are a number of them. I don't know if you've encountered it as such, but it's the most common the most common vessel that you that we find along the coast here. Yes, um, but uh, well, they know the difference. If we try to trick them, I, I we should went down. That went down. When you guys that were slaves on the goblin one that you um, commandeered, that was the same exact ship. And then now he's saying he's got another one for you. So. Oh, okay. I guess that'll work. As long as it'll fool them. Question I mean, before we dissolve the meeting. I generally don't have questions. <laughs> it's it's the, the type of soldier that I like. Uh, the only other thing I would ask is, uh, you said that ship is uh, coming tomorrow. Um, so uh, tonight, are we able to just uh, regroup? We actually have our our friend here too, uh, Whisper. Did Whisper join us? Now I can't remember now. Did Whisper get here with us? Yeah, he's there. Yep. He got marched in after you guys shortly thereafter. Uh, kind of catch him up. Uh. Indeed, he's uh, he's around. I, I believe that the that uh, the last uh, someone saw him, he was skulking around the manor house. I believe Some, something along those lines. But he's he's here. All right. Well, um, I think, so do you have uh, quarters for us for this evening? Indeed. It, it, uh, are you planning to sleep with the beast lords, beast, beast folk again, or would you like actual accommodations? I have, I do have tents with cots if you'd prefer. That'd be nice. Indeed, it's it's no problem. See the cook, and he will, oh. he'll, will sign you to a to a, a tent. I think the plan was, uh, we're going to go with the crew. We're going to be brought back in with the crew, if I remember right. Wait, this... didn't we already do that? You did last night. Oh, mm -hmm. we did. Okay. Yeah, I remember you guys got brought in. He set up a meeting for you with, for the following day, so you had the kind of okay, the afternoon okay. to kind of mill about. So you went and talked to the chef, the cook, and you went and talked to the blacksmith and a couple other things. And then um, you guys did sleep with the beast lord. Then they woke you up in the morning, took you in for this meeting, and so now he's saying that the ship will come tomorrow. So you have basically the rest of today, um, and then you can sleep wherever you like, whether you want to sleep with the crew or whether again or whether you want to have your own tent or whatever you guys want to do. Uh, what are we going to tell the crew? I, it's it's funny you bring that up. Uh, I was talking with Jeffrey, and he's uh, 
he brings up a good point that uh, it may be beneficial to uh, return with the beast folk on the ship um, if they will go. They're obviously free at this point, and we've told them that multiple times, even though they don't appear to be acting as such. But uh, if they uh, if they w- will return with you, it would definitely help. I think uh, keep up the the illusion of uh, of norm normalcy. I I, yes. I think there is an issue with that plan. Seemingly good, but they will obviously. Oh man, it keeps freezing. Their control anymore and are unlikely to be with us. Aye, that's true. But, that is definitely a good point. It, what? On the other hand, these creatures were bred into servitude, so uh, it, they're not wild creatures. So they probably would have looked for the um, the next person to lead them. Yeah. He I, says, go ahead. Sorry. I expect they would go with us. I'm just. Uh, I'm just contemplating what's best for the illusion with Boda. Uh, uh, Owen, do you? Uh, I'm, I'm really not sure there. Do you think he, Owen would believe it more if they're back with us or, or not? If they escaped when their master was killed? Um, I, I think that uh, he would be more suspicious of his own breeding techniques if they ran away as soon as their collars were off. Sounds good to me. I think uh, we can uh, convince them to come, at least give it a try. We've uh, built somewhat of a open dialogue with them. Yeah, Hillix says, uh, we've encountered the Beast Folk before, and we've freed them. And a very, very small percent actually head out on their own. There is a small group on the island that uh, have have decided that they're going to live out their lives here in peace. Uh, but most, most stay and uh, ultimately try to return back to their captors. So I, 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 I agree. I think that they'll go without any issue. Maybe, uh, the three beasts on the island be used to uh, uh, You're more than welcome to engage them if you like. They, they, uh, they're, they're rather secretive and they keep to themselves, but they're not hostile. Were they, were they recently destroyed? Uh, it's over the past six months we've been we've been a- attempting to disrupt this line, trying to get Boda to show his ugly cow face, but he uh, he's refused. I wonder if it may add any um, more sustenance to our story to Lord Boda when we return that we uh, had found some of his previous crew, but it may also raise more suspicion. Hard to tell. Oh, yeah, no, I, I, I think we should say we, we came back and, and, you know, knocked you guys out or something. But the question is, how are we going to get the crew out to believe that? Yeah, too many variables makes it hard to keep the story straight. I can tell you from experience. I agree. Uh, you, you, um, um, Alondo, you said... You think we should say we're knocked out? I'm sorry, could you go over that again? No, uh, I was saying that we, we need to prove that we uh, were successful with our mission. I, I think that's the only way to, to take care of this. Is we need to prove to Boda that we, we, we did it. And we need, to bring, we need to bring the crew back with us, believing they need to believe it too. I agree that, yeah, I believe we definitely should try to bring them back. I was only... Pondering if it was uh, good to try to get any of the other beast folk that were previously abandoned here on the island to return with us. How many is there? He said a small group. He didn't give a very specific number. Uh, to be honest, I, I don't know exactly, but I'd, I'd guess a dozen approximately, maybe. Oh, I, I think it'd be very wise to bring them back. They don't know what's going on, and we can just go get them. But somehow we got a... a let this crew that we're bringing back no say we we kill them all yes uh i yeah i I'd, I'd say whatever if you think that's best okay you said we killed all who we well we clobbered the, the fort here the fleming fist 
Pardon okay, me, so you want to, sir? But okay. So you you're planning on to make the allusion to the crew that we are escaping under our own free power with no help of the men here in the morning and stealing the ship. If if I understand you correctly. Yes. Okay. I mean, I, I could. I mean, I'm I'm okay with that plan. Uh, and what's his name? Heck, Heckle. Uh, would you be able to uh, help Phil. us? Uh, you yeah. know. Look. Perform this uh, illusion in the morning. Will we be able to uh, have some of your crew possibly unconscious during our free escape to the ship? Uh, we can, we can do whatever you like. Uh, yes, I, from, from our intelligence, I don't, I don't think that Boda has any idea what size force that we have here, or other than that that we're involved. I know, I know that he knows that. We're here as the Flaming Fist because uh, there was a crew member that uh, survived. But uh, I don't believe that. I don't believe he has any idea what uh, what we have as far as numbers and, and resources. Yes, I, I think we just need some, you know, burning smoke up in the distance or something like that. We can say that uh, we took care of them, and they come back, and we say we have this head in this box, and we kind of. Uh, we'll just we'll break through the door or something like that. The, the I cell agree. Door. Or, or you, we could say we stole the key to the cell. Oh yes, just give us the key. We'll we'll go open yeah. it and may, maybe and, uh, maybe give us some guard uniform so we can say we posed as guards or something. Yeah. Yes. Any any uh, weapons or armor or anything that we can take that looks like it came from here would help sell that illusion. So we can definitely also, provide you with some some branded some. Uh, flaming fist uniforms, if that'll help. Yes, and we could just, like, you know, put pig's blood on it or something, so it looks like um, they were used. I, I think our friend Whisper has uh, spent some uh, time bonding and building more of a relationship with some of the beast folk, so it might be best for him to stay back today with them while we can go um, explore to the other beast folk camp, would you say, Orlando? Owen, does that sound good? Yes. So we could attempt to get them to join us? Yes, this sounds perfect. Yeah. All right, well, Heckle, I think we got a plan. Indeed, it does, in fact, sound as such. So, uh, as I stated, the ship will be here dawn tomorrow. And, uh, We'll we'll follow whatever uh, whatever plan you have set up, and uh, move from there. We'll meet with you uh, uh, again before uh, before uh, I don't know after sundown to uh, let you know everything's in order. And we'll we'll get the key and whatever type of uh, setup instructions we need for the morning. Indeed, I'll have I'll have Mitha walk you through the device and the operation so that you're comfortable. Great. Well met, he says. And he goes back well to his met. desk, takes a seat, and starts scribbling furiously in some sort of a ledger. Okay, um... Well, um... I guess we should make our plan. Uh, so you guys walk out? Yeah. Okay. Um, ha uh, I would draw stop him before he left the door and ask, uh... If he could give us his uh, best location whereabouts of the group, or where they're just last known lo location of the beast. Yeah, he lifts his head and says, "Jeffrey will meet you at the door. He'll 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 walk you through all the details." Thank you. Mm -hmm. So you guys walk out. I mean, if you're looking at the map, by the way, it's this building. This is kind of the command center tent down here in the lower left corner. That's where you guys walked out of. And to his word, uh, Jeffrey is kind of leaning against the wall. As you guys walk out, he says, "Oh, hello! I didn't expect you guys to be so quick. I thought you'd probably be a little longer, but uh, what can I, what can I do for you? Uh, I'm sure that you have questions, and uh, I'd love to answer them." Uh, Jeffrey was the mage guy, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, what were our questions? I seem to have forgot. With all this excitement. <laughs> Oh, yes, we, we need to make it look like uh, there's fires in the background. I don't know if you could whip up some illusions and maybe some dead bodies around or something like that. Because we're going to escape with the crew, make them think that we 
went here and we did our job, we killed the commander, and we have his head in this here box. Mm. Which will blow up. Who are you trying who are you trying to fool? The the, 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 the rest of the flaming fists. Oh uh, no, no, the 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 animal men. The beast folk. Oh the beast folk. Oh, indeed. Alright. That should be simple enough. I can definitely definitely arrange something. Um I could get them in a smaller central area. I could. Can, he he kind of wandered, kind of meanders off and starts to trail off in his speech and talking to himself a little bit there. But yes, I, be, I believe I can. I can definitely. I can make that happen. Um, oh, good. Um, yes. Jackson, we can leave that to you during the day today. We're going to be um, out searching for the other group of beast folk in the meantime. Would you happen to be able to show us where their last known coordinates are here on the map? Oh yes, absolutely. Um, I don't have a map, but um, if you if you walk out the gate here and and head head along the beach past the past the actual encampment here, it's about a mile and a half or two miles, and you'll see on your left, just off just off the beach, maybe maybe two hundred yards, you'll see a pretty pretty large encampment that they have set up with some some rudimentary shacks and some some cooking fires. That uh, it's pretty you can't miss it, but it's it's right there. Excellent. Well, um, shall we? Did we ate and everything, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. You guys got up and ate and did all that. Okay. Yeah. I think that'll be uh, all, Jeffrey. We will uh, touch base with you once again before dawn, just to make sure the illusion's all set. Sounds sounds like a plan. I will see you then. He heads off, walking to towards uh, where the beholding cell was. Um, kind of as you guys move along, you notice that he starts. Looks like he maybe he's pacing off the area. It looks like he's maybe trying to figure out uh, something. But he's uh, looks like he's hard at work already. Oh, great! Well, this should go splendid. No time. Um, I guess Budo will be dead. Well, let's go. Right, so that's, uh, Things never go to plan in my experience, so I think we should just be prepared for that. Oh, really? Uh, well, it seems like everything's kind of worked out so far. I mean, uh, <laughs> well, there's I, that I, one time when, hmm, it seemed to remember I would different, but... Way, and I would say nothing has worked out so far, but <laughs> <laughs> we'll plan for things to go un unexplained. <laughs> Let's zigzag down the beach to the... Uh, Beast folk encampment. Uh, All right, Phil, whisper in and let him know uh, uh, to spend some time today with the beast folk, uh, um, yeah. building up the uh, illusion that's going to happen later on. Okay, he says, uh, "Yeah, I'll take care of it." He said, "I'll uh, I'll spend some time. They already they already trust me, so I'll 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 get it set." Mm -hmm. Oh, excellent. Um, okay, so you guys head uh, head kind of out the same gate that you came in, um, and it's still an eerie feeling as you walk through um, this barrier. There's no physical sensation, but as soon as you walk through the barrier, it's as if the camp behind you does not exist. You turn around and look, and it's a completely green grass field that's there. You can smell smell the earth from the grass and it's just it's it's an eerie feeling you actually can take a step on either side of the barrier and you can see it just kind of how much of a transition there is but it's 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 uncanny hmm. Hmm. but you walk through um out onto the the guards at the gates don't don't even stop you at all they actually see you approach and they actually push the gate open for you um they kind of nod in your direction as you as you walk out and they promptly shut the door behind you. Oh, okay. Let's go. So I, uh, I kind of like, after we get like down the road, I kind of huddle up with the guys. Guys, now we got three people that want us to kill three different people. <laughs> I, uh, I think this last group's probably our best bet at the moment. What do you guys say? We feel like, I feel like a pawn in a big game that I don't quite understand. <laughs> A hundred percent. Oh, and and we could go uh, multiple ways with this. Honestly, we could double cross this group, but that's not my uh, that's not my intention. I, I I was honest with these guys because I think they're the um the best best team to back here, as they say. Well, I I know that uh, we are slave to the um, 
wizard, and by taking out Buddha, we kind of solve the problem with the wizard, and um, and maybe this wizard will be a a problem himself. Uh, was he a minotaur my, my, guy? I don't. No, yeah. he wasn't. Yeah. What? Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. He was okay. Dietrich's a minotaur. He's a much he's a much smaller minotaur. But so my yeah. my hopes there, Orlando, is we have two options the way I see it. We should first try to have him within the twenty foot blast range if possible. If not, we could e we if he's unable to be that close to Boda at the time, we could easily target him directly afterwards in the chaos. And third, after boat is down, we we have, like as you said, we solved our problem with him, and we could kind of handle well, him whenever we we see the best opportunity after that. Um, uh, there's one problem. Uh, you see, if we end up fighting the wizard, he could just snap his fingers, and we would choke to death. We've already seen it. Remember? We have. Aye, but if it's, if it's after the, immediately after the moment that uh, if it, the blast happens. Uh, he, he should be caught very much off guard. Yes, but Even what, if he, if what if he can protect himself? We would be dead. I think it's best to uh, pose to him like we are doing what we're supposed to do. Kill Buddha, get these off our our necks, and then we can worry about him. I, I hopefully if he have just to. Uh, up his uh, end of the bargain. We never thought he was lying, so either way, the problem should take care of itself if he, as long as he takes our collars off, right? Yes, and if it, if he if he doesn't, I mean, we're not really in any different situation. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, uh, fighting fury fist, it is. <laughs> Flaming fists, yes. yes. And uh, as I like, I would just start continuing to walk down the uh, beach. All right. But uh, uh, oh, and what did he mean by that? That's. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what am I, uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm all for sticking with the um, fidgety fists too. So, <laughs> you're out as we go along is kind of uh, a... uh, fidgety fist. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta listen closely. <laughs> so right. you meander down the beach. Um, they're. Um, you, almost his directions are almost spot on. Uh, you head head down the beach a ways, and uh, you see the telltale signs of uh, tracks in the sand. Some of them have a tail that's dragging through the behind and between the tracks. Some don't. Some seem to be uh, lupine in in nature. Some to be seem to be some sort of rodent, and others seem to be reptilian in in nature. Um, you head along, and you in, do, in, in fact do see. Um, an encampment that's kind of set up um, into the into the trees a little bit. I think we should proceed with caution. These uh, these beast folk are free, and they're not going to know us, friend or foe. Oh yes, that's wise. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, give me ten minutes. I'm gonna cast comprehend languages. I think my character has that. Let me see. I believe he does. I believe. Yeah, I get I get confused playing all their different wizards and shit. What do they have and what they don't? Uh, yes, he does. Okay. So I'm gonna cast that so I can at least understand them. All right. We uh, did some of some of these guys speak English, right? Uh, uh, the ones that you encountered, they do. Yep. Kind of a broken English, they do. Yep. Not English, but common. Same thing. Yep. Should we uh, be waving the white flag as we enter, so to speak? Uh, yes, I, um, I think so. I mean, I, uh, I could come in posed as a, a, a one of these beastmen, but I can't speak their language. Yeah, I yeah. Say the less deception, the better, because we don't want to startle them. Who looks the... Uh, Alondo, I, I think you might look the uh, least um, intimidating to them. Maybe you should do the talking. Oh, that, that's weird. I, usually people are scared of wizards, but I think you're right. <laughs> All right, I roll up my sleeves. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I'll try. So I'll there, the there's, a, there's a pretty clearly defined path that runs from the beach directly to their kind of encampment. Um, you guys go use that, or do you um, stealth up there, or what's kind of the plan again? 
I guess we. Sh I would think stay visible, kind of like um, Owen said. We don't want to deceive them at all. Uh, okay. How f how far away are they? You're about 200 yards away from their encampment right now. On the you're still on the beach, but um, you can you can clearly make out uh, that there's an encampment in the distance there a little bit. It's not very big. It looks like there's about six um, huts of varying sizes there, and there looks to be kind of a um, a center cook fire or something in the center that's got some smoldering coals, and there appears to be some sort of a um, from here hard to tell, but something is cooking on it. You guys can actually smell it from here. Oh, what, why don't we just you know, call out from them from here? They can hear us. They probably know we're even approaching. Sounds good, Alendo. We'll stand behind mm -hmm. you. Oh, well, yep. I'm not very loud. Maybe you should. <laughs> I'll, I'll be I'll be next to you if I make sense. <laughs> All right. Um. Uh, <clears throat> Speak up, old man. <laughs> just, just give me a second. Uh, hello, uh, <laughs> peace, people. We come in peace. I think that should do it. Should just uh, I think that did it. That was a good job. All right. Um, <laughs> a couple minutes, eh, maybe, maybe a minute goes by, and um, you do see. Actually, uh, you didn't notice before. But um, about 30 yards away from you, behind um, one of the trees to the to the side of the path, um, out pops a head, and it appears to be one of the one of the rodent uh, varieties of, um, of the beast folk, um, which you guys kind of know as the rat folk. Um, he kind of pops his head out and takes a look, and looks in your direction, praisingly looks, kind of looks back periodically at the camp, looks at another tree, you notice at the side. Kind of stands there for a moment and then pulls himself back behind the tree. Uh, uh, Buddha sends his regards. We're, we're, we're some of Buddha's people who come here to save you. Um, how long do you wait? A minute. Okay. <laughs> Minute goes by, and um, you guys can roll perception real quick just to see. I'm all about that. Okay, good. I would uh, say, Alundo, I, I, I don't think they would be that fond of their old slave master's master, honestly. I'll roll perception too in a sec. Is that that doesn't have to be tower? Oh, it doesn't have to be the tower. No, it's fine. I like how. Uh, Alundo and I have almost the same modifier, but of course, he rolls well, and I roll like crap. That's, well, that's that's pretty good, actually. Um, that's perfect, matter of fact. Yeah. Um, oh, and yeah, you, you don't notice anything. You actually, um, you're just wondering what's taking so long, actually. Um, and uh, that's not quite good enough, Strider. Alundo, you actually notice, probably because you're the one that's talking, so you're paying the most attention. Um, you do notice that there's sounds like there's some activity coming from one of the larger huts that's in the back of the um, kind of clearing area that's kind of facing you. Um, sounds like a little bit of scrambling. Oh, it sounds like they're scrambling. They must be here any time. <laughs> um, uh, uh, we're coming, beast. Uh, did you guys, you guys have your weapons, right? Because they returned them to you once you got into the camp. So did, uh, did yeah, but we got them, them, we got them put away. Okay, all right, just check. Okay. I mean, I do. Yep. Okay. Um, you notice uh, another probably probably three minutes goes by total, which seems like forever, but really isn't all that long. And um, you see a, a relatively large um, group. Um, looks like probably eight, a uh, quick count of these beast folk come out. Um, and at their center is a, um, looks like a very old, um, you haven't really come across one of these yet. Um, looks to be half, maybe crocodile or alligator and half man. Um, his head is more alligator kind of style, but he's kind of got the build of a, of a man, but his, his entire body is covered in these scales. And they tend, they are actually are, um, he looks like he's pretty old because this, the scales have kind of 
started to deteriorate and they're not uh, not the golden or the golden or greenish hit hue that you would expect from something that's healthy he looks pretty looks pretty poorly and he, he does walk with a little bit of a limp he has a he has a staff that he's kind of using as own more more of a walking stick than anything else um, and they're the, the remaining seven are kind of surrounding around him and he's he's walking down towards you um, in your group slowly they don't look like they're um, Moving, but you do notice that the <coughs> other seven all have, um, looks bless you, all have, uh, looks like spears, um, that have crudely sharpened spears that they're all carrying, kind of, um, not threateningly, but definitely at kind of at, at, at their sides. And they're moving towards hello. you. Uh, hello, uh, we just need to talk. I go pick up my robes and just start kind of start walking towards them. <laughs> I'll okay. be close behind him. Okay. Yeah. We, we mean you no harm. Um, oh, man. Uh, Strider, you actually notice as you're walking up the path that there is a, a very thin, um, looks like actually vine, but very, very thin that runs across the path at about, uh, at about knee height. At about uh, about 15 yards in front of you, where you guys are, you can just make it out. I caught the glint of it in kind of the sun, just the right angle. Oh, is it, and are they? How far away are they? Uh, they're in the middle of their clearing, still walking towards you. So they're a good hundred yards away at least. Before right, right. So I kind of put my hand in front of Alundo and pointed out. What? Okay. What? What is it? I don't see anything. Uh, do you sense? Do you sense any magic there, Alundo? It, it looks strange to me. Uh, well, give me some time. I can cast it, but I don't think now's the time for that. You no, can investigate it further. Anybody can investigate it further if you like, if you want to be able to see maybe what it is. Walk into the vine and find out that way too, old man. You could do that. Yep. Um, okay, uh, I'll investigate. Should I make a perception check? Or? Uh, just investigation roll if you want. I'll investigate as well. One sec. Oh my god. I'm very good at that, one. but not today. That was a one. That was a one. Yeah. yeah. Um, you think it's a vine that goes nowhere? Yeah, it's nothing. What are you talking about? I just keep walking forward. <laughs> Let me have a look at this. Yeah, you both can look at that. I Strider. rolled it. Strider is pretty confident. Yeah, you got no idea either, Owen. That's pretty good. You think it goes nowhere? Maybe it's a vine. <laughs> yeah, Strider. You, on the other hand, you can you kind of follow it along and look along the edge, and it looks like it's connected to um, maybe some hollowed out bamboo. That looks like if you were to trip across this wire, it would probably rattle it and make one hell of a noise. That's what you're assuming. I, I'm I I'm walking it. forward because I don't think there's anything there. So yeah, I so I stop the window. You know, stop. Okay. Yeah. What, what is it now? Come on. We need to talk with them. They're probably and wondering what I, we're uh, talking about. I just, uh, it's a thick vine or a thin vine? Very, very thin. You're, you're actually shocked that it's made out of vine. You kind of got close and looked at it, and it looks to be some sort of vine, maybe some sort of, who knows, some kind of plant material, but it's extremely, extremely thin. Uh, I take out my rapier backwards, so it's uh -huh. not threatening. And I just kind of push the vine down with the uh, back end of it. Okay. You push it down, and um, as you push it down to the ground, it does, in fact, um, that enough of that tension on it, it does let it loose. And you see that it's almost like was a was a uh, uh, snare trap. It flings it up in the air, and there's it, it's an entire tree worth of, of hollow bamboo that just rattles and makes this tremendous racket as it happens. Uh! Whoa. Oh, wait, you knew that. What did you tell us? I was there. And uh, nothing changes with the beast folk, by the way. They're still so, walking in your direction. I just hold it down at the ground and I go, now you can continue, old man. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, so I knew that was there. Of course, I kind of brush myself off and go on. Okay. Yep, so you continue on. Um, you guys kind of meet, we'll say, um, about 50 yards from there. Um, from their encampment, they meet you on the path. Um, they will. How close do you guys get when you walk up? Uh, I don't know, twenty feet away or something. Sure. Okay. They walk up and stop um, a little further than that away. Okay. Um, and you guys continue on. So, 
as they do so, um, you get um, you get about yeah, we'll say maybe forty feet away, and the the old wizened half crocodile creature holds up his hand. Uh, we should oh. stop. Oh, okay, yeah, we'll stop. I'm sorry. Um, I, uh, my name is uh, Alondo, and this is Owen, and this is Strider. Uh, we're here, as you can see, we are slaves of uh, Buddha. Buddha. And, uh, and I, I don't know how you feel about this, but we can get you off this island if you'd like. Yeah. Uh, he kind of seems to be taking in everything that you say. And he, he points to himself and he says, Nazu. Nazu. Good. I can understand your language if you speak it, but I cannot speak it. I can only speak common. He says, well, that's helpful. I mean, he, he speaks in a language that uh, Owen, you, and, and Strider have no idea. It sounds very extremely guttural. It sounds like a, a growling in the back of his throat, almost like you would expect a crocodile to make. Um, but uh, Olundo seems to be shaking his head along with it, so oh, maybe yeah. he understands. Um, but he says, that's, that is convenient. He says, that will that will help with uh, at least one half of this conversation. He said, why, uh, why would you think that uh, we'd want to return with Boda? He enslaved us since, in my case, since birth. Why would I want to go back with such a pig? Hmm. Interesting. Does everyone feel that way? Uh, you said then are you you can't so you say that in common? oh yeah yeah okay so he um you can see he stops he's you tell he's trying to interpret the wording kind of that's happening it takes a little bit he says, if I understand you correctly, my comment is is poor the 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 one that that lives we have no desire to be to do anything but take revenge on Boda oh. so if your plan is to 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 return and be in his service, then be gone. Oh, perfect! Actually, uh, this will work out pretty well. Um, um, I, I let these guys know what we we just talked about. Yeah, I was gonna say at this point I'd be uh, tapping. But, but I I will I I say just a second. I must talk it over with the friends, and but we might be in agreement. And then I, I go. I told you they weren't gonna want to go uh, back to their. Do you guys? Stadium. Do you guys know Elvin? <coughs> Uh, nope. Do you guys know Dwarven? Nope. Do you know Halfling? Elvish. Nope. You know Elvish? Okay. Do what other languages do you know? What other language do you know? <laughs> uh, I, I speak passable Fey. Oh, uh, shoot. Uh, <laughs> well, here, I, I just start messaging them. <laughs> okay. The, um... When the when you start to cast the mm -hmm. the other seven beast folk, you can tell noticeably tense and raise their spear tips a bit. Oh no! Don't, don't mm -hmm. worry, I, I I'm not doing anything. <laughs> um, Nazu, he he relays that to the to the rest of the folk. Um, one thing that's a little different you've noticed with this group is that they seem to share um a common beast folk language. Nothing you guys have ever heard before, and you yourself included. Um, Elundo, but um, they seem to be all sharing the same language. Unlike the others that you've encountered um, so far have all had kind of their own. This one seems to be kind of a hodgepodge of uh, maybe all of them kind of put together. So more of a slang. Oh, interesting. They must have been here for a while. I'm going to have to note this down. This is exciting. More knowledge. <laughs> uh, and anyways, I, I, I tell them, I just tell them what we... Yeah. Um, what we discussed. Sure. So, uh, if you guys think it's wise, maybe we could get some of them that are willing to come back with us and they could help us with this plan. Uh, I can do it. That sounds risky, but you can be a persuasive and wise fellow. Well, I'm, I'm actually what not you really think persuasive the, at all. Uh, potential problem. What's that? Uh, Owen, what uh, what do you think might be the potential issues with bringing them back? Um, just that if things don't go well, then they are trapped in service. 
Well, I think uh, either way, we would explain the risks to them. Yes. So they'd be making the choice on their own if they want to if they want to possibly help, you know, destroy their old slave master or not. We wouldn't want them to get into any, anything they don't they don't know the risks about. I'm sorry. What was that, Owen? It makes the assumption that uh, once uh, once Buddha goes down, that the entire place crumbles. Um, I don't, we don't know if somebody else is going to jump in and take leadership and say, "Now I've got these slaves all to myself." You know. Well, you kind of do know that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> they they may be useful if uh, if we do need extra. Um, Soldiers, if Buddha, Buddha goes down as well, but I understand what you're saying. We we don't know what's going to happen. It's yeah. really going to depend on how that uh, how that all goes. So yeah, so we I'm I'm just very of putting uh, freed people in more danger. Uh, well, I mean, uh, we'll let them choose. It, it it should be their right if they would like revenge uh, for what Buddha has done against them. I think we should just let them know what we plan to do, and anyone that wants to help are, are welcome to. As long as they know, uh, you know what they're getting into, I think it's it's fair to let them decide as well. Yes, I agree. Okay, I'm gonna. I'll be back in one minute, guys. You have a poop? Uh, no, that would take more than one minute. Okay. Oh. That's like ten minutes of squeezing. <laughs> I know. Especially when I don't have my prunes. <laughs> uh, so I'm, you guys relay that message to him. I'm yeah, assuming. Yeah. Or, yeah. Okay. So. We'll go back. Um. So what do you tell him? You guys tell him kind of exactly what you said as far as concerns go and what could potentially happen or do you guys try and spin it or what do you do yeah no i don't i just tell him exactly exactly what we're doing okay in fact, yeah, this is better in my element than telling the truth and telling exactly how things have happened is works better for me okay he says uh we are we are 14 in number here and uh i can tell you without even asking my t my tribe that uh, you will probably have at least half that many I will uh, I will ask but there are a few that uh, have uh, started a family and uh, have childs on the way and will not will not join you oh like, no almost yes. came. but uh and I myself am in no condition to be fighting. Plus, I, I believe Boda had a special interest in me, and I may be more of a hindrance to you than a than a help. But uh, what what, wait, what we'll, kind of interest did he want? If you haven't noticed, I'm I don't look like your typical beast folk, and uh, in my in my prime, I was. I was quite the warrior. Those days are long past for me. Uh, Boda, Boda would send me into into danger just to see if I would survive, and I think he may remember me. Hmm. I see. So, uh, I will I will meet with the tribe uh, there now, and uh, and let you know when when do you plan to. To seek revenge on Boda. Uh, tomorrow, the next day, we're, we're planning a ship off. I... Tomorrow. All right. Well, do not take this as a sign of disrespect, but please wait here. I don't want to upset yes, the tribe any further, and I will. I will no, meet with them. And no problem. Be back with you soon. Uh, All right. He heads. He turns around. He heads. Uh, Back uh, with the, his his jar or his wet new seems to be a little bit more relaxed than, uh, than what they were. But uh, they head back to the to the to the looks like the cook area, and um, you can hear kind of a looks like a call's gone out, and they start to round up everybody. Um, we're actually uh, 
the scouts that were kind of the one scout, the rat folk that was on the trail, there actually were two others that you guys didn't see that remained hidden um, kind of along the path in various areas that came back. They seemed to all collect in the center. Um, uh, Alundo, can your bat tell how many of them there are? Mm, all right. I'll go have the bat kind of take a count. Or I'll look through the bat's eyes so I can count it. There are, in fact, 14 that are all standing around with him. Um, it looks like the majority of them um, are two of these uh, half crocodile, half human ones along with him. Um, the majority are of the wolf slash fox nature. Uh, anyway, some sort of canine kind of. Uh, breed there what you'd consider probably fox kin and then there is um two of the of the uh the sign or the half bear as well so some pretty heavy hitters as far as the size go comparison to what you, you've seen are mixed into that group as well so uh, um they seem to be talking in kind of that common language it looks like a little bit and um you can see that there are a few that are um, some, making some animated gestures. Um, you know, you're a little too far away. You want to listen in with the bat? Um, yes. Okay. Yes. And you can use your comprehend languages on that too. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And how I, long does that last? Uh, it lasts an hour, but I'll just cast it again. No, it's fine. You're not. You're not in danger of that, so that's fine. Um, you hear uh, Nazu says, uh, kind of relays exactly what you said, almost to a T. Um, and then one of the half crocodile, um, steps up into the group and he, um, he starts beating on his chest and you can tell he's, he says, I, I say we, we, we go with these outsiders and we take out this Boda. I, uh, I was in his service for a short time, but he, they do not come any worse than him. No matter what the cost is, we must, we must avenge those brothers and sisters that have died due to his mistreatment. His enslavement of our race must end now. And he kind of pounds on his on his chest a little bit, and there are a few that answer on the call with that. Um, there's a smaller one of the rat folk that comes up. She's kind of in a shawl. She's kind of hunched. Um, she appears to, she doesn't look that old, but she looks pretty frail. Um, she walks up, and she's got kind of a calming presence, you can tell, with the group. And everybody kind of settles down and and seems to intently listen and hang on her words. And she says, we must think carefully about this. We've all experienced the atrocities that Boda has done, what has she has done to our people. But if we are not careful, we are find ourselves in his clutches once again. And we must all make our own decisions and think carefully before we, we head off, no matter how much it may hurt our hearts or may burn in our chests that this is the right thing to do. So I, for one, vote that we all make the choice individually and not not as a group. And there's some definitely some nods of agreement across the entire group. Who says, I will leave it to all of you to decide. I will, will walk and talk to the outsiders. Those of you who have decided that you want to accompany them and and undertake this this God's errand to deter to destroy this great evil. Come with me. Those who do not, there will be no ill will. Please stay. And he wanders down the path. Um, looks like two of his retinue or of his personal guard go along with him, and one of the large the large crocodile, the one that was making the comments, he immediately follows as well. Um, it looks like that the group in general breaks up into, into small clusters or clicks a little bit and starts to have some some more smaller discussions. Um, by the time uh, Mizzou gets to you with the half crocodile and one of the one of the earth sign, um, two more have headed in your direction. One of them appears to be a foxkin, and the other is um, another earth sign. It's heading in your direction. All right. 
compliment. Orlando, you should greet them. Yes, I did. Yeah, he I comes just up. Moment. Hello. We they will make their own decisions, and uh, we shall see what what we shall see, uh, and who will join you in your in your work. All right, that sounds good. I trust all went well. I believe you will have some volunteers, he says. That's good. Alendo, while we're while we're standing here, why don't you ask him if he uh, knows that may be useful about the uh, camp or the mage that we may have to deal with. That's a good idea. Yes, well, he could understand you, but... Mm, oh, I'm uh, sorry. Uh, what, was, what was that mage? Uh, what was his name? Uh, let me see if I have it in my notes. I probably uh, do, the actually. Minotaur? The Minotaur? Yeah. Uh, Dietrich. Uh, I, I start uh, talking to the so very slowly. And uh, I try to project mental images uh, through my ability to um, let to get help that goes along with what I'm saying. And I give him a picture of the uh, the mage Zetrix and uh, and like a picture of the camp with like a question mark on it. And I, I ask him, "Do you do you have any information from when you you lived at the camp that may be helpful for us when we return?" Uh, he says he says in broken common, I not spend any time in magic. I spar fight only. What? I, I, I say what do you mean by in magic? Uh, uh, speak, speak in full form. Uh, and I, and I, I say you translate. make a speech for my friend Alundo and I point so he could translate to us. Okay. He says in his own native tongue, he said, I never associated with any of the magic users there at the compound. He said, uh, I was basically confined to the <clears throat> to the quarters for for hand to hand combat and uh, I never really encountered Boda other than saw him in the distance. I never had an audience or any any sort of a meeting with him. So I'm not familiar with any any magic user, but uh I can tell you that uh, when I was there, there were about uh, between 20 and 30 minotaurs that were stationed there, um, which we as beast folk greatly outnumbered them. Hmm. So, um, out all you beast folk are enslaved. Does that mean all of the beast folk would... Um, probably want to join forces with you. He kind of sighs. He says, unfortunately, most of my brethren have been bred since birth to be slaves of these minotaurs. Very few of us remember what it's like to be free. So, freeing them, although a wonderful thing, would probably not result in their immediate help now, if you could bring them to me, and I could spend some months with them, then it might be a different story. But uh, I don't know. Translate to translate all that. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, it it sounds like a classic story in, in novels I've read. Interesting. Um, so uh, <laughs> so um, I say, like, well, okay. we may not be able to bring them back if if everything goes to plan. You. May, it may be a reason why you may want to come with us to to possibly liberate your your fellow beast folk so they're not in chaos if if we are successful in setting them free hmm. good try uh why don't you roll persuasion in the tower please persuasion in the tower of power <laughs> Uh, 
Oh, why does my persuasion suck so much? All of your persuasions suck. Yeah, none of you us took charismatic all... characters. None of you guys are charismatic. I think actually Aaron is, which is funny. <laughs> he um he looks at you. He looks at you again. And he says, "My heart wants to go with you, but my body wouldn't do you no good. I am so far past my prime." that I would only be a detriment to your cause. But I will do this for you. Let me speak on your behalf with the rest of the with the, with the track one more time. Perhaps I can I can persuade a few more to, to your cause. Uh, we appreciate the gesture, my friend. He heads back down the path towards the towards the, the tribe that are still gathered in small groups. <clears throat> he speaks with them for a few minutes. And two more actually head down the path towards you. And, uh, a foxkin and a, a rat folk head towards you as well. So now you have uh, one, two, three, four, six in total that have, have are joining your cause. Oh, great. And so I just say to the guy, oh, we're, we're thankful for those who came. Um, should we wait for any others, or is this all? Um, so um, Nazu comes back to the, uh, with the other two, by the way. And, um, he says, no, I will, I will not be accompanying you, but, uh, this is my second in command. This is Daru. Daru will. And he points to the other half crocodile, half man. And he, he puts a hand to his chest and thumps on it. He says, Daru will slay the cow. Oh, good. And, and um, I just kind of mimic them and I go, Daru! <laughs> Alright, um, well, I need to uh, discuss with everyone here, someone that can speak the best common, uh, uh, our plan. It's kind of intricate and it involves like a type of magic and trickery and such and they need to be aware of it. Also, they need to be aware that this wizard, uh, Zetrix, He's the one who actually enslaved us and not the cow. The, uh, the big cow. Uh, you said this to the zoo? Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, so he kind of, you can see here, yeah, obviously you can understand it, but he's, he talks to the group that's kind of collected here and they, they decide that, uh, the, one of the rat folk that, uh, walked up last actually, um, she comes up and, and she says, uh, I I speak the best common, I believe. Oh, excellent. Uh, uh, this is sort of complicated, and I don't think, um, I don't really, I can understand, I just don't, I can't speak it. Uh, um, so relate to him this, and I, I tell him our story, I pretty much the whole background, I had to tell him, you don't have to tell him all that, but just that the fact that, well, you know, this wizard actually... He he actually owns us with the collars, and he wants to get rid of um, uh, the Miner Bulldog. And uh, and we plan to do it with this here, and the rest of the crew here, they... they Did the rest of the crew have the collars that are with us that are captured? Nope, they all fell off when... They, they did, okay. Rushing. Great, yeah. that's good. And I'll tell him, well, as far as we know, these crew, we haven't told this crew that's with us what our plan is. Our plan is to sort of make it seem like we defeated the Flaming Fist. And when we come back, we're going to present this box to the... So I'm just going to tell them the intricacies of that, you know, of that plan so they're aware of it. So they don't just, like, start fighting or something like that. So while Alundo is explaining, I kind of say this to Owen and Alundo. What, what should uh, these new beast folks roll be? Are we going to try to have them blend in with the other beast folk when we return to Boda, or are we going to split? Um, just say that these we we are returning these these old slaves we found. Oh yes, I, I think they should be uh, with us uh, when we do this to Buddha, so they can see it. They can have their revenge on on Buddha, and and well, oh, yes, just I in case that. he doesn't die, we can all take him. I don't think you uh, fully understand what I'm saying. When we when we get back to Boda, 
he is going to notice that we, for some one reason or another, have a lot more beast folk. No, I'm asking we, if we... he's them to try to blend in with the other beast folk. Oh no, as no. if they were part of that crew, or if we should let them no. explain we... that these are other people that we captured we... Uh, of their old place. Yes, well, no, we we present these to we Buddha. We bring them with us. When we bring this gift to Buddha, we tell Buddha we have a gift for him. We bring these people and say, hey, we've returned some of your slaves. It'll be like, it, it, it'll actually make it probably more convincing because, hey, we got these people off the island that were here for some time where they're captured and... Sounds we, good. Uh, they just need to know their role in it so they act yes. as, as if they are, they are captured slaves when we... Uh when we arrive and then i kind of look at the, the the girl that spoke the best common and i say Could, how long have you been on the island i pers me personally probably three months can you tell me how you got here were you on a slaver ship that was attacked she nods her head yes um the fists here um boarded our ship and uh Killed back to uh, this island and uh, told us we were free. And uh, some of us left and found this village with Nizu and uh, and stayed. Can I ask what happened to the rest of you? She kind of lowers her eyes. Some some can't can't break free. They 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 only know what they know. So in that situation, what did they do? They were, they were freed in this encampment, and they didn't, uh, they didn't leave. Where did they go? Uh, she kind of just again gets even quieter, and she says, "Most tried to swim back." Uh, I say, hmm. Ben, do you have stars on your shirt? It's a Christmas tree. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> what does it say? Awesome. It says dashing through the lights. It was a race that I did. With <laughs> That's week. awesome. Yeah. Cool. I, I, had, and I look at Orlando and Owen and I say, okay. So she says, uh, so I, I just to be clear, you, you want all of us to pretend as if we're still slaves, even though we don't have the collars when we get back to the compound well you just have to tell them that you're you're willing to still serve you miss you miss your master even though that's not true at we all are, we are just using that as part of our illusion our trick our trick we're playing to to attempt to kill lord boda we're gonna she nods we're gonna present you guys as uh, like sort of a gift to boda uh, therefore uh, when we give him the box with the head in it then he opens it, he blows up, and if it just so happens he doesn't blow up, we're all there to either see him die or mm, kill him or, if we need to. So, so it might be a good idea for you and your comrades to uh, have your weapons concealed when we arrive. She says, the only weapons we have are these spears, so... um. We probably will need to get some. Oh, we have some. Don't worry. I'm sure we can find something for you back at the Burning Fist camp. If you'll accompany us there, we'll we'll make sure you get a good night's uh, rest and, and are fed this evening. Right, well, we might want to give him a day here first, and we can uh, head off the next day. How she long knows. do we have? Oh, we our ship is leaving at dawn. They are they got to be back there. Oh yeah, they, see this is the problem. Uh, they only gave us like six days to accomplish our mission, and that's why we're in a rush. And uh, if those six days are up, um, these collars tighten our necks and our heads pop off like a crepe. Well, that and the the ship is leaving at dawn. Oh, that one too. She says, uh, "Time. I I understand that time is important." Uh, I, th I think that the, they may want to spend the, their last night in camp, in, yes. in the tribe, though. 
we can meet you so. at the gate at, at sunset if that if, at sunrise if that's yes if that, that sounds perfect and we'll we'll bring extra weapons you tell us how many people and what kind of weapons they prefer we could you know see if we can gather those uh, which which right. is fine if we're not leaving at dawn I, I had expected that the ship we were planning the breakout with the other beast folk at dawn was that not correct Uh, well, it's just, it doesn't matter when, really. They don't know, so. We can just do okay. it whenever. She nods. She re- she relays it all back to the to the other five that are that are there with you. You guys, there are six, by the way, with, with you guys there, so. Um, including her. And she communicates that, and uh, Daru looks at you guys and says... Drew, lead them to gate at dawn. Oh, okay, good. Daru! He does, and he follows it. And then turns around and then head back towards the towards the truck, towards the camp. Oh, okay, that's all settled. I'm so glad we talked to them. This is very interesting. There's so much to write down. <laughs> all right. So we go back Anything to else? the fort, right? Okay. Yep. Whatever you guys want to do. All right. Then we're gonna mm-hmm. procure the weapons that this uh, group. I'm assuming they told us they prefer. Yeah. You find Jeffrey, um, and let them know they all are are very familiar with some uh, remedial kind of weapons, but you know spears. So yeah, they can definitely equip them with a better kind of a spear. They all know how to use a dagger. They all know how to use a short sword. So, you know, mm-hmm. some some basic kind of stuff. Right. Um, and Jeffrey uh, says, eh, no problem. We can definitely handle handle that for them. Uh, so let's see. That means we need to have six plus if we have. No, nah, I'll definitely make sure that it's a board ship for you. Not oh, a, not great. Perfect. Oh, this is, this reminds me of stories of old I've read. This is exciting. Mm-hmm. What stories are those? I go, oh, oh, I wonder, was... maybe you'll be able to write in your book about it one day. Oh, yes, I, how'd you know I'm writing books? Huh, interesting. <laughs> well, well, I you... guess I told you I did work for the library. and Yes, you, you seem to do a lot of writing. I, I just yes. thought you might want to add it to one of your great stories. Oh, yes, I will. I, did, I mean, certainly. Like, when I get back to Candle Keep, because the mission they sent me here on, yes. <laughs> Wonderful. I go, well, actually, uh, actually, I want to continue that a little bit. Alunda, uh, we did we already talk about the book with him since he woke up? I don't remember this now. Nope. Oh, so yeah. okay. <laughs> Alunda, while you were um out, we I noticed your your book fell your book fell right out of your uh, of your robe there that had some uh, very interesting stories in it. Wait, what book? Oh, my spell book, book. That, uh, I bring out my it. spell book and show you my spell book. <laughs> no, not that book. The other one. Oh, the other one. Uh, oh, my journal. I bring out my journal. No, that's not the one either. <laughs> How many oh. books you got in there, old man? Um, that's about it. You know the one that 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 told about your your search all these years. <laughs> you know the book I'm talking uh, about. Um. Uh, yes, I think I do. Uh, what about that one? Oh, we were just curious about it. It was a very, very interesting book we read. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm here. Uh, uh, yes, that's what the candle keep sent me here to find, actually. Yes. Oh, so your mission is to find that? Yes, yes. You can see my hands start to shake. <laughs> <laughs> what do you plan to do with it? And where do you think it might be? Uh, wait, what are we, the book? I have the book right here. I already found it. Oh, no, no, the the item you're looking for. Oh, well, um, mm, I, I don't know. I, I just know that, uh, you know, some things are best not to talk about here with who's all around us. <laughs> I don't know. So okay. Jeff, Jeffrey is still kind of hanging out there because you guys were talking about the, uh... Yes. And, and um, I just go back on the shoulder. It's okay, old man. We'll we'll continue this conversation yes, later. Uh, yes, that's right. Some things aren't best to discuss, and you know, private matters. 
Jeffrey says, if you if you're looking for something, I, you know, I, I I could probably help in in locating something. It does sound does sound rather interesting. Yeah, really. Well, the things that wizards uh, are often looking for are both dangerous and difficult to procure. And he Fine. says, yes, yes, indeed, they are. He seems to be very excited about that. <laughs> um, did it, I? I don't know if we decided what it was, Ben. I don't know if you want to write to me in a message. Or oh something. yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't remember if we did. I told these guys when they looked through it. There are so many different sketches about potentially what it could be. You have no idea. Okay. I mean, you would never know from looking for it as to what it actually is. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll type you what it. What yeah. It actually, well, there might be a, a, a clue or something I can give him yes. that he might understand that I've probably figured out. Yeah, exactly. You're you're from everything you've read. You're pretty confident that um, you've got a, a an idea as to what it is, um, but but not really anything specific. So I can roll or can I check to see if I recall it if you want or something or. Uh, yeah, you can. Well, uh, this will kind of just determine how much detail I give you. That's all. So I just sure. do it in the tower. Oh, sorry. I'll do it in the tower. Okay. I kind of uh, I preemptive striked it. <laughs> I pulled a Donald Trump. All right. Nice. Uh, hopefully that's just as good. That's Arcana. I can give you history too if you want. I don't know what. No, that's okay. Is. They're the same bonus, so it doesn't matter. I don't think. Damn allergies. Maybe I could talk to you in private about this. Uh, I don't think it'll concern these people. Uh, it's rather in-depth magic. And... Jeffrey just says, yeah, of course. Yeah, you know, it's whatever. It doesn't have to be now. I know you've got a lot on your yeah, mind. With yeah, the... well, that's what wizards do. Uh... I, I message him uh, what you just told me. Okay. He sends back... Uh... How interesting. That's definitely something that uh, we should look into. I've uh, I've not encountered such, but uh, I do have some tomes that maybe I could peruse and find out what uh, might might be encountered and might might be around. Right, did I did I miss something? Uh, what? <laughs> yes. You did. You see a lot of hand gestures. That's what you see between the two. Yes, yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> and talking like he knows what's going on and I was like, did I black out? <laughs> <laughs> um, wait a minute. Uh, uh, ask him. Uh, do you do you, you don't work for the Candle Keep, do you? Or that's why I asked Jeffrey. He kind of gets a sly smile and he says, "I may have spent some time there in the past, um, but that's for another time." As you said, we've got a lot on our plate, so maybe we should discuss this further uh, at another point. Oh, yes, I'm liking you more and more. Interesting. <laughs> Anyways, all right. All right, cool. So um, he says to the entire group, not just Alundo, he says, um, so I think that all the remains, I, I have the, I think I have the illusion set. I think it'll be quite inspiring. It should be enough to get the, the beast folk that are detained all riled up and ready to, ready to travel with you. The only thing left is I think I'll send Mitha to you to... To go over the details of the device, just oh. so that you're top of. Good, good idea. All right, all the details done. Now I know you've put a lot of the time and effort in uh, really tailoring this device to Lord Boda, and uh, it, it seems like a great plan. But in case uh, things don't go as planned, as my friends and I have experienced a lot of recently. We, uh, we'd love it if you might have any type of backup for us. Maybe even some type of targeted weapon. It, it doesn't have to be something 
so well thought out and tailored just to Lord Boda. Hey, even if you got some potion we could throw at him if he doesn't open this crate, any type of uh, backup that might help us in our uh, in our get to our final goal. Or potions that could enhance us. That might help. Mm. Um, you guys can roll persuasion if you want with advantage since you guys have been on pretty friendly terms. Um, with I'll them. help whoever has the best. Or yep. Whoever wants us. We all can just one. Right, somebody roll, do, somebody roll with, with advantage. I, whoever has the best in charisma modifier should do it. I one. Uh, <laughs> mine would be zero, so I can try. You're better than... Maybe Alundo might be the best. I don't know. He might mine be zero, is, too. Mine is one. I, well, wait. Let me see what I got. Um, one? You're like the charisma bitch? I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I don't have charisma. My character's You're charisma of ten. Star. So... Better than negative one. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? I have uh, do I have? I don't even have. I don't have any persuasion or anything like that. So. Okay. I'm negative one persuasion. Are you one? Right. <laughs> I'm not. I'll, I'll roll. You don't got any bonuses, right? I thought someone would have a bonus. <laughs> no, yeah. none of you guys do. It's awesome. You know, it doesn't. <laughs> I think um, whisper does. <laughs> Oh, well, if Whisper could join us for this, if it's worthwhile, if this is a one and done roll here, <laughs> I don't remember actually. I can look real quick. I don't remember either. I might pull. Oh, guys, negative one. A <laughs> negative one. Okay, so go ahead, Alendo. You're Jesus, exactly man. I right. now I, hmm. I know I know what my next character would be when if Alendo dies. Um, in my campaign, especially, yeah. 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 I figured no one would take wizard, so that's why I went that route, but... I was smart to do that. Uh, mm -hmm. Um... Where... Oh, what I... What, oh, persuasion, right? Persuasion with advantage. Okay. And you don't have to roll in the tower, I don't care. Okay. Nice work. <laughs> <laughs> he says, uh... uh no! <laughs> well, he says, um... You know, it's... It's not that I don't want to help you folks, because you know I do. I I, I think I think you've got a real shot here, but um Is that really what you fucking rolled? I don't <laughs> <laughs> Well one was higher than the other. Yeah, there's that. <laughs> At least I got a little bit higher with that advantage. I, like, yeah, I, I was talking to him, I should roll. <laughs> he says uh, He says, but I, I think that this is a this is a well laid plan and that uh, I, I don't want to I don't want to skew any results we may get for uh, by by muddying the waters yeah. with anything else we haven't spoken about. So, oh, yes. good luck. You're, you. you're probably right. Yeah. Thanks. Well, he said, let me let me get Mitha, and uh, and if you have any other questions, we'll we'll talk in the morning before you go. Although, you are going to be running out of here pretty quickly, so maybe yeah, we're going to kind of sneak out. Yeah, but come come find me once you once you figure things out. I'd love to discuss your. Your project further, Alando. Yes, that'd be great. Sounds excellent. He wanders off. Uh, so, do you guys uh, sleep in the tent? Is that what you guys are doing, or are you guys sleeping with the beast folk in the? Uh, or what are you doing? I asked him for one more thing. I was like, Oh yeah, uh, about those books. Um, would it be possible I could take a quick look at your books? Um. You asked him once before, and oh, did I? Know. I don't. I don't remember. Yeah. No, that was spell for spells. I was talking about Correct. his uh, information books. Oh, 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 yeah. You can roll quickly on that one too. He's uh, you can tell he's a little guarded on it. He's like, um... <laughs> <laughs> he says, "Fuck this." Why I'll don't quit. we wait until we meet again, and then we'll go through them together? Oh, oh yes. That yeah, sounds All great. Right. <laughs> You didn't. Did you set up the illusion to go off already? Because we may not be ready to leave right in the morning. Uh, it's a trigger, so I can decide when it goes off. Um, so uh, we'll. I'll make sure to touch base with you before we we get it into play. But I'd suggest it be before dawn, since it's part of the illusion and the effect is going to be kind of cover of darkness almost. That's uh, that's what I'm afraid of. Uh, they they said they were going to meet us here at dawn. That's why I thought they might have wanted to come with us. The beast folk. I look at Alundo and Owen. He said, "Well, we can hold it off a bit if you, if you, if you need to." Well, we'll just we'll just tell them they have to be here earlier. It's fine. 
Okay. Okay. Um, so, so you guys uh, are staying with the beast folk, or are you staying in tents? What well, we gotta go back to the other beast folk, telling them they had to be here earlier, <laughs> if they can. We'll just say you send the bat. Uh, oh, with the message. Okay. The sure. message, and Mizu is smart enough to figure out that uh, what you're saying, and they send you back. Okay. The bat says, large lizard stay earlier. <laughs> oh, your yes, bat good. Excellent. Well then, uh, we'll just procure the weapons. We'll get, um, we'll get our, our all our stuff ready, our our weapons, and I'm gonna study up on my spells. Okay. Whatever. That are, you, are you with the beast folk then, or are you with in the tents? Uh, First I sleeping. think we, sh I think we should stay out, out out of the beast folk. But we'll send Whisper back and tell tell Whisper that we have a plan and we're working on it. Okay. Ta Tell them that. Well, is it yet? What's, What's that? that? Is it nighttime yet? Yeah, it's getting it's it's dusk now. Okay, yeah, I mean I, I play I think we should all sleep with the beast folk, but we need to finalize the uh the plan and maybe uh maybe one I, of us I don't think we sleep with the beast folk. I think that we sleep outside. We send Whisper back to say, Hey, they're they're working on getting us out. Okay, that's that's, that's, uh, that should go well with the plan. I, I I agree. Yeah, Whisper says I will I will stay with the Beast Folk. I've gained their trust, and I think it's important that they know that we're with them. Exactly. Okay. All right. So you guys get assigned tents. You go talk to the cook. He he assigns you guys a couple tents. Uh, as you're kind of getting ready to set up, Mitha shows up, um, and she's got. Um, a small, looks like box underneath a, well, some sort of cloth. And she said, hello, I was wondering if I was going to be able to encounter you guys before you left on your expedition. Oh, I wanted to make sure that you were here and uh, that if you had any questions, I'd be able to answer it for you. I've got a fully functional model here that I can show you exactly how it would work other than the explosion. Of oh, I need to be quiet. <laughs> but then you want to make sure that we have everything exactly set and ready to go so that there's no problems. And then that way you only get one shot at this if you're not familiar. Just continues to keep rattling until someone... Oh, this is excellent. Uh, uh, what? I'm loving it. She says, yeah, so uh, how it works is that you... Uh, you have to get this into his hands, and he has to actually make contact with it, physically make contact. If he does not, if he's just within proximity, it won't actually work. And if it's somebody else touches it and opens it, it's not going to work at all. And so if that happens, then you're going to be completely out of luck because you're not. none of this is going to be working properly. Although I wasn't supposed to tell you that because that then maybe you won't want to do the mission. But uh, oh, wait, what about this not working properly here? What, 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 what now? What? So anyways, you need to get Bo to actually be the only one that opens this case, and if he opens up the top and he's within proximity, it'll explode, and it'll destroy anything within 20 feet, and I'm sure that he'll die because he's not that big, although I have heard that he's actually pretty large for Minotaur, although he's got a strange color or something. I'm not really sure. Just keep going. Uh, okay. So if there aren't any questions, then I'll just leave this box here with you guys so you can play with it a little bit so you can get me familiar with the weight and the size and everything that's in here. Just remember that he is be, he's the one that opens it, and if there's anything that pops up question-wise, uh, I won't be here to answer it. So uh, I guess that's it. So, so have a nice day. So, so wait, uh, if we open it, it doesn't explode. Uh, it, so if, if he's not the one that opens it, then it's not going to work properly. So that would include you. So you need to make sure that you're not doing anything besides handing the box to him and making sure that he opens it. And if anybody else handles it or and, and touches it, that's fine. But if they try and open the box, that's when there's going to be a problem. So you need to make sure that that doesn't happen. Oh, okay. Wait. Um. Um. She says, oh, I won't forget. One more thing. I did talk to Gregory, and he's uh, Gregory, and he did say that you wanted to change the illusion from the, what I had in there before, which was just absolutely nothing, to, to look like someone's head. And we decided that maybe you wanted to put uh, 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 Le Le Commander Hillock's head in there. So we just we made it close as possible with that. So now, obviously, you won't be able to open and verify that. But I, I did take a look at it. It's pretty pretty real, except that maybe he's a little different color, and I haven't really gotten that close to him to be able to determine it. But that's what I've been told. And so, I, you know, I haven't really spent that too much time with severed heads. So I don't really know how long it takes to degrade and the rest. But uh, I think we're pretty close. So uh, yeah, if there's nothing okay. else, there go. Yeah, it's not going to matter much. No, Thanks. it shouldn't. Why don't you just uh, write that all down for us, please? Not again. I'm writing it here. 
I'm already writing I, it I, for him. <laughs> I think I need to take a walk after that. I don't understand anything that's going on now. I write so, I all those details down. Like I said, I won't be there to answer them for you, but you know, you, you can definitely can, can ask somebody, and I'm sure that they'll be able to at least direct you in the right area. And if you're ever in this area that does the, mm -hmm. the sword coast again, please stop by. And I would more love to hear how it worked and how well it oh, exploded. Oh, yeah, yes, so it doesn't even matter. Part. And if somebody could make a jot or a sketch of that so that I could see it, I would really appreciate it. So that's 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 that's, that's all. And then and uh, good night. And she. Uh, okay. Leave me a box, by the way. <laughs> don't right. open the box is what I know. <laughs> right? Don't yes. don't open the box. Yes, nobody open this box. Including okay. you. Uh, and... Does it have a lock on it? N no. Uh maybe we should put a lock on it just That's in case. That's a good idea. Do just I have case. oh I don't have that spell. Oh well. I don't have this oh, and if you yet. accidentally open this box, it's going to be your head in the box, and there's not going to be an illusion. Uh, right. um, no, uh, I, that's dreadful. I'll take my belt that's off, nice and I'll put my belt that. around the box, just so I remember. Very good. All right. Sounds good. Yeah, we don't have any locks or anything, and I don't I don't have a way to lock it either. I don't think that Whisper does either. Let me look. Uh, yeah, all your stuff was taken away, so I might have had a lock, but some fuckers probably got it. Actually, no, he would have given it back to us. The only thing you guys don't have is your um, magic item. That's yeah. all you don't have. I'm a simple man. I don't carry much. I don't carry much. Uh, do, 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 do. He's got a signal whistle. No, he doesn't have one either. Yeah. Nope. Okay. All right. So, uh, you guys do anything, or you guys go to sleep until a few hours before dawn, I'm assuming? Yeah, I'm going to write down all the notes of everything that's happened today, so I know, and okay. can keep everything straight, but... Sounds good. I'm going to make sure we got the key for the cells. Yep. Yep, absolutely. I'm going to send my bat to follow uh, Justin, that's the mage, right? Jeffrey. Jeffrey, um, uh, Follow Jeffrey back to... Uh, where he's staying, maybe I can get a look at where his books are at. Just a peek on him. Um, okay, how, when do you send the bat? Um, like, as soon as he leaves you guys kind of a thing? Or when do you... I'm going to have the bat kind of just follow him. Um, and, yeah, as soon as, as, soon as I, I leave, the bat just kind of falls. Yeah. He'll kind of keep an eye from above just to see what building he's gone into. So he's not going to be, like, right behind him. Um, okay. And then he'll just stay on that building until he leaves that building. He'll go to the next building, and then whenever I'll look through the bat's eyes to see where he's at, and then maybe I'll send okay. that in to take a look. He um he actually heads to the manor house. And, okay. uh, heads inside there. All right. Um. Is there a chimney? There is a chimney um, kind of on that back. If you're looking at the manor house map there, it's the back um, right corner of that little circular piece there. You're guessing it's probably a chimney that leads to the um, uh, kitchen area. It's probably the cook area back in there, mm -hmm. which there is a fire going currently in that. Oh, there is. Uh, is there any yeah. other chimneys or windows open? Mm, no, you don't find any. Center around the perimeter and everything seems to be buttoned up pretty tight. Not okay. super, you know, just nothing obviously open. Is there any holes like into the attic or anything like that that the bat can crawl through? Uh, you can have more perception in the tower sure. for me. No. My perception is plus one. Oh, that's in the tower. Uh, yeah, that's a third bat, I think, isn't it? What's that? Oh, for yeah. well, that that's for um sound, but oh. I don't think I don't think it would be sound to find a hole. Um, no. no. Although it does see with sound, so maybe I don't, I don't know. Whatever, I wouldn't do it. Yeah, probably I would not. say no. Uh, he doesn't really find anything. Looks like it's pretty buttoned All right. up. All right, I'll just leave it at that then. Okay. Uh, Very cool. Anything else you guys want to do before 
morning ish. Okay. Mm, I'm good. Yeah, no, I I don't probably maybe change out by spells, but I don't think I need to. So, okay. Um, so about an hour before dawn, um, you hear kind of a makeshift knock on your on the tent post that you guys are are sleeping in, and you. Oh, uh, ah, what is it? Uh, they're coming. <laughs> uh, uh, in the tent. <laughs> you hear you hear a familiar voice outside. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to, to startle you. I just uh, thought uh, I get we'd get an early start and make sure everything's prepared before we uh, put the plan into motion. Oh, it's yes. Scary. Good. Oh, okay. Uh, wonderful. Uh, are you ready? Uh, are you decent? May I come in? Yes, like, I'm completely awake, like, anxious, you know, thinking about the plan. I didn't ever go to sleep. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, so you uh, you guys walk in, and he kind of outlines what his thought was. He said, so, you know, he kind of walks you guys outside the tent and kind of just kind of holds his hands up and shows you kind of what he's thinking. He's like, I'm going to carry here. I'm going to have some corpses in this area here. There's going to be some sounds of ongoing battle that seem to be coming from the manor house as well as from the command post over there. Uh, I'm going to have kind of a natural trail with some of the some of the soldiers are kind of going to funnel the, the the beast folk down towards the dock area. If that's if that's amenable to y'all, that's kind of what my thought is there, and sure. uh, I think that that may be may be good. Yeah, Will you be good. waiting to trigger this on your own? Oh yes, that's a, they won't see me at, at all. I didn't include myself in the, in the illusion. That, that sounds like it will work well. Uh, has the boat arrived? Uh, yes, actually, it, it, it's it's out there. You can you can see. He points uh, points out, and there are actually are. You can see the boat is actually at the end of the dock. The boat that's pictured down here is not the right boat, but that there is a boat down there that's uh, got pretty well lit. There's a there's a light at the bow. There's two on the stern. Um, there's two at mid-deck as well on both sides. Uh, the plank is down, and uh, it is, it's sitting there ready to go, looks like. So um, sails have not been obviously unfurled, but uh, looks like the anchor may be, may be up, maybe just held in place with some ropes to the dock. Does it look identical to the boat we came in on? Uh, from your knowledge, it's definitely the same type of boat. Um, as far as the make and the, the style, um, you wouldn't really be able to say specifically if it's, you know, down to the nick and the groove and everything else that's there. But it's, if, if for you, if somebody was to ask you if that's the boat you came on, in on, you'd say, yeah, probably. And uh, we had all that lights, those lights on? Uh, no, you guys didn't when you were underway. Uh, all you had on was you had one at the bow. Uh, you didn't have anything at the, at the after at mid deck, so. The, uh, and I look at a London Owen, would you guys like to inspect the boat before we, uh, in, the, in this final hour, before we, uh, Yes. Start off our our big plan here. Yes. I think that'd be an excellent job to do. Yeah, we'll take okay. out the boat. Oh. All right, old man, put some clothes on. <laughs> oh, okay. yes. Um, my legs are kind of skinny, aren't they? All right, so you head down to the boat, um, walk out there, and you notice that. Uh, the six beast folk that uh, you had talked to yesterday are actually aboard already. They're standing on, on deck. Oh, excellent. Hello, well, man. Duru walks up to you and says, We killed Boda today. We hope so. Uh, uh, it'll take uh, us a few days plan, to get my there. Friend. Um, our weapons are... We have all of our weapons, right? Do So let's... Uh, we show the Beastmasters to wherever their weapons are stored at on the boat. They've got them all in the hold in the in the bottom. So they um they you, you take them down and and uh, they all they all gear up basically. So they all have a short sword, they have a dagger, and they have a spear. Oh, this might require some subterfuge, and it'll take us a few days to get there. Remember. I I don't believe it is a few days. Wasn't it's it? One, like we out there in one day, yeah. Um. So, so the other beast folk that we're bringing, let's, I'm just going over this with a Lundo and Owen out loud. Okay. Those beast folk are going to be coming onto the ship in, in an hour, and they're going to think that we're escaping the, the fighting fist. And I have no problem letting these beast folk hear this, right? Uh, it's fine. And uh, they're going to see these, these beast folk. We need to uh, make that believable in their eyes as well, um, that we uh, found these other slaves. 
So we, can uh, say I, that we, we took them from the the fortress that we just destroyed. So, so in that case, should we put these guys in the brig? Um, I don't know. If depends on how well they can sell being uh, being uh, rescued as opposed to stolen. Yeah. So, uh, and I kind of look at the one that speaks the best English, and I go, "Do you understand what we are uh, we're, we're saying here?" Yeah. The other five. Uh, you can tell are struggling with some of the some of the speech, and they look to the rat folk, and she says, "Yes, we we can, we can, we can let them know that we're we're here to to get back, get back to the compound and and serve faithfully." And I think that they'll they'll believe that if we tell them that we've just been roaming the island, waiting, biding our time. I think they'll 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 understand. Go, yes, that will be important. That you're. Uh... Your fellow beast folk, um, you know, these will be your kind, and they need to be believe that you are uh, going back to serve as all part of this illusion. And uh, can you make sure all of your uh, comrades are comfortable and able to do that? She nods her head. I, I think so. Okay. So, you know, given the weapon and all, uh, you should guys should I explain that they should all conceal these weapons now so it doesn't look like they're armed. They say, yes, uh, the dagger is no problem. This, the short sword, uh, maybe. And what would you like us to do with the spears, then? I, I suggest we le we'll leave the spears on, on the deck for now. Would And I look at Owen and Alundo and see if they all agree. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, yeah, it's fine. She, she relays that to the rest of the group, and Daru says, Daru no need spear. <laughs> uh, so then I explain to him about the... This person about to start um that that maybe they should come down on land with us and we will uh free the other beast folk together they all nod yes. she she relays that and they all nod and i guess we just while we're up here we just check out the ship make sure everything looks good ready to go it looks like there's no issues and uh yeah just just that everything matches the ship and that we looks like it's good to go yeah, the only thing that you see here is there really are no supplies in the ship. Um, so, you know, unlike a normal ship, you'd expect there to be, you know, fresh water and food and kind of stuff. You can tell that this is pretty kind of bare bones, just just the ship kind of a thing. So, uh, you know that the, tr the, uh, the travel back is, you know, not even a day. So it's not really an issue, but um, there's nothing, no, no sort of supplies in here. So. We just don't want uh, any issues when Lord Botus, whoever, Doc Men... Uh, nothing obvious, you know. It's it's a bare bones ship, but that's what the other one was you were on too. So it's not. Um, so I kind of look at Owen and I go, "Oh, what do you think? You think this will uh, serve its purpose?" I think we should probably um, give it a little damage, a little battle damage, because if we were involved in an altercation, even if we won, it should look like uh, we didn't come out unscathed because we did. Uh, we're not coming back with the full complement of crew. I, I I definitely would agree with that. That that makes give sense. Yourself, we, uh, give yourself yeah. some inspiration on that one, Owen. That was very good. Yeah, um, you can idea. all roll a. So I'll hand it off to uh, Alondo. Nice. Um, I, you can also roll a um, thanks a history check with um, advantage if you want, just to see if you can remember anything specifically about the other ship that uh, maybe you guys should focus in on as far as I'll changes go. <laughs> Did you roll it? I did. This is oh. my area of expertise. Okay. That's right. You would know. Uh, yeah, that's good enough. Um, you do know that on the ship you had, that um, on the port side specifically, there was a pretty distinct scorch mark kind of near the bow. Um, not really what you'd, what you'd say is from anything more than maybe it got hit by some sort of flaming debris or something like that from a from a past battle there, but it was definitely pretty distinctive and you kind of remember what it looks like. So other than that, it's normal wear and tear, but like you said, you know, you guys are, are basically saying you've been in a battle. So you can kind of instruct them as to what, what that should look like. So I will do that. All right. Um, I'll make the scorch mark. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. Not a little guidance. It's no problem. You can, you make it look like what Owen remembers, which is pretty funny to say. But, um, <laughs> 
from so, things or just there? From great, there? Right? Where, where no, you, you, you never, never know. Remember this. Excellent. Exactly. <clears throat> All right, very good. So you kind of check things over, and um, Gregory says, uh, so are we ready? Do you want me to, to trigger all the illusion? I think it's time, isn't it? Sure, I think everything's in place. All right. <laughs> Let the fun begin, and good luck to you, and I'll hope to see you soon. And uh, he, he snaps his fingers, and he vanishes. You don't see him any longer. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, it sounds like War has broken out in the camp. You see billowing smoke coming from all from the sides of the, of the actual walls themselves seem to be a fire. You can actually you can smell it. The smoke is burning. Uh, everything from old timber to grass to, to even the stench of, of copper, uh, which you assume is you know cooking in blood. And nice. uh, all of a sudden, the doors burst open. Of the uh, of the holding cell, whisper at the head, and he seems to be motioning. You obviously don't hear anything from him, but he's motioning them in a direction. Uh, as that happens, uh, you see that there's a much larger number of, of soldiers than what uh, you guys have seen within the walls. Seem to be forming ranks and moving towards moving towards the these uh, the area from two fronts. And Whisper is, is leading them out and heading down, running down the path with them all in tow. Some of them s start to stop, uh, maybe it's almost attempting to engage the group. And uh, some of their companions grab them by the arm and drag them along. And they, they seem to be running down towards the docks, towards the ships. Uh, they don't seem to re see any resistance. There are a couple soldiers that... Uh, they do come out to, to block the way, as you'd expect with such a charge, and all of a sudden are struck down by arrows. And when you look to the side, you see beast folk that weren't there before have kind of emerged from some of the trees in the perimeter that seem to be carrying bows and have shot arrows into these imaginary soldiers that then fall mm -hmm. at the feet. With the, the charging remainder running past them, it's a very, very, very elaborate illusion. If you guys didn't know it was an illusion, you would you'd swear... It, uh, it was real. I lean over to Alondo and I'm just like, it, is this magic? Uh, <laughs> yes. That's, that's amazing. Yes, it's illusions. It's actually in the, one of the is it, it, nine schools of magic. Wow. And uh, so, so again, Whisper already freed them, the beast, the beast folk. Mm -hmm. They're running up to the dock, and where are we standing in comparison? You guys are on the dock currently, so um, you guys can be wherever you like. You've you still got some some time before they get to you, although they're coming pretty fast. So I would say that we weren't on the dock; that we were like leaving the battle area, and we kind of join up and, and like like as we see Whisper, we go Whisper, you know, head for the ship, head for the ship. All right, we'll we'll kind of say that you're in that grassy area up in front. I'll, I'll just say we'll we'll say you're kind of standing in this area. And that there's another battalion of soldiers that are making their their approach that direction. You guys are almost starting to form up a line to try and hold back the charge, kind of a thing, as the group starts okay. to run behind you and run towards the dock. When we appropriately like dirtied up and tore our clothes a yeah. little bit, look like we were in a battle. Yeah, I mean, like you guys look like you're you're pretty prepared. You you notice that the beast lords, beast lords, beast folk are not. Uh, are not really concerned with you at all as far as what's happening. They seem to be pretty blindly charging behind Whisper, trying to get away from what's raging around them. They uh, None of them seem to be um, at all concerned with what's happening. So, so we kind of just like, well, I say we just take out those imaginary soldiers and then we run up the ramp <laughs> to the dock with them and, uh, <laughs> and just like, come on, hurry up, get on the ship. I shoot some fire bolts back at some... Okay. Targets. And I go, Dreads! Yeah, and I miss, I hit grass. There's a lot of soldiers. This is a huge column of soldiers coming this direction. So, yeah, you kind of you, you launch a few over the front line. So, who knows if they fall or not, kind of a thing. Yeah. And um, well, they, they continue their march. Starting oh, orders, or what do you do? Yeah, I, I obviously, um, we, would, we would just right away just start unhooking the ship. Oh, and Oh, and uh, help free, help free the ship. Let's get underway immediately. And uh, you know, I guess I would start saying stuff, and 
I um I guess I'd probably run right to the um Just you know, just right on deck and start beast mode beastmaster, take your normal places. Let's let's get a get set sail right away. They seem to fall into kind of a regular a normal groove. They all start to to unfurl sails and start to take up their normal positions like you like you said. And uh in no time, you guys have, have pushed off from the dock and are, are under sail. Um, you look back over the side as you as you continue, and are you still just in awe of the illusion that Gregory has put in place? The, the the soldiers have all kind of converged into one gigantic, massive company that have now kind of lined lined the shore, and they're all pulling up crossbows and firing. Amazingly. They either clear the ship entirely or splash short. <laughs> never, never hit the, never, never hit the boat. But they are, in, it's, it's, it's like a, it's just like completely blots out the sky as, as it fires. It's just an incredible that right, they never, I'm, never make contact. I'm gonna cast illusion of like fire going by to kind of make it look like, um, uh, it's blocking the, the, uh, bows. The, the, like I'm deflecting the arrows, making yeah. them kind of miss. You know. Sure. I act like I'm casting a spell, and I'll, I'll shout out some orders. Take cover! I'll take care of the arrows. Yep, that's perfect. Uh, they obviously all duck, you know, periodically as the as the bolts come through, and um, you know, you you don't see. Oh, oh, what the hell! I'll just put all of it. But what the hell? Because rolling is fun. Right. Yeah. Um, none of them. Um, Seem to take anything, but take it 100 percent and seriously, dodging, ducking. You can tell that there's some of them are in complete fear. Others seem to be exhilarated by the by the chaos. Um, and uh, before long, you guys are are out to sea. Yeah, as soon as we're out of range, I go, "We made it, guys! We made made it!" And then I. <laughs> Into the story that we escaped, and I kind of, you know, tell Whisper. Whisper knows it's the plan, but you know, I have him in on it like he doesn't know, and yep. I just explained it all to them. That oh, we barely made it out of there, and we, we we took them out. It was it was it was tough going there for a bit, but we just made it. And I look at Alondo and Owen. Okay, very good. So you head out to sea. Um, somebody roll me a d. Six and a D twenty. We'll let you decide your own destinies. I got a D six. Tower? Nope. Oh, he already got. Because we don't six. know. That, that's a die six. Anyone want to do the that's twenty or? Then the twenty. Stars got the twenty. Okay. Um. So the weather on the sea <clears throat> this morning is uh, you've got some large rollers, some big rolling waves. Um. Typically, either indication of a incoming storm or a or a storm that has passed. Owen knows, um, but um, but still relatively smooth seas as far as travel goes. Really not hampering movement at all, but um, definitely one of those things that uh, is kind of foreboding or or uh, letting you know what's happened. Uh, Thirteen, and you guys travel um, for about. 12 hours and nothing happens. We have 12 hours to do something if you guys want to do anything on the boat other than relay the kind of the, the plan uh, what's happening. But. Uh, we'll try to explain to the, the crew what we did which is basically take out the Lord Commander and we have his head in the box and no one is to open that box ever. Um, <laughs> A cheer goes up when you say that. Yeah. If you like a gravelly uh, group, so. these flaming fists will fear us no longer. Well, we know they'll fear us. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. Uh, anything else you guys want to do before you get to the compound? I would mm. just explain about the. Uh, Tell the beast folk about the other beast folk that we already um, picked up. I'd explain to them that we um, kind of rescued them from the camp, and uh, I'd also like 
get like spe specifically with the one leader person, the second in charge of the new beast folk. Uh huh. I'd uh, you know, let him get some time with our beast folk to start talking to them. You know, because he might be able to start uh, putting them on a better path. Okay. That's a good yeah, idea. for sure. Uh, sounds good. All right. Well, we'll say about 12 hours go by and, uh, you know, you're getting, uh, with the time of the year, it's um, kind of late afternoon as you approach. And you can just make out the silhouette of the Hellcat's compound in the distance as you're approaching. Oh, this is getting exciting. Uh, okay, I'm going to go pee, and then we'll... Good, good choice. Right. Okay. I will do that. I will play with myself also. I don't know if it really... I didn't see if it sold or anything. It's really an obscure old thing. Are you taping boxes or are you? Um, we ran out of FedEx labels, so I get to tape every single label on every package. Oh, that's not good at all. Yeah, I start a real job tomorrow, so I'm just doing this. What do you mean a real emails. job? What job? What was this? I don't know. It was a bad idea. <laughs> what kind of job are you doing? I'm going to be an admin assistant at a law firm in Cherry Hill. Awesome. Yeah. I got to be in Cherry Hill at 9 a.m. on Route 70. Yay! You better leave now. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That should be fun. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I've been thinking about going to law school, so I think it'll, like, let me see if I really want to do that or not. Heck yeah. What kind of, what kind of law? Huh? What kind of law? Any idea? Um, me personally, I don't know. Maybe something like uh, business or nonprofit. The guy that I'm working for is actually a Pennsylvania lawyer, and he represents all of the major malls, malls in like any like you know like 
if you slip and fall or if oh, yeah. you die at the mall and your family yeah. wants to sue. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, but he lives in New Jersey and he's been like, commuting every day. So he just decided to move his office over to New Jersey. That's cool. Yeah, I'm excited. This was supposed to be a real job just because you didn't take it like one. That meant maybe that was the problem. My boss is an asshole, so yeah. I totally agree with that. Oh, wait, sorry. What did he say? I totally agree with that being an asshole. Hello, asshole. Me. Hello, asshole. What's all that? Stuff? All right. Cool. So, uh, you approach anything you guys do, kind of with the compound in sight, but not close. Your your guess is it's probably about five miles off right now. Hmm. Um. Well, how long would five miles take us? Say that again. How long will five miles take us? Uh, it'll take you about uh, about two hours, probably. <clears throat> Maybe a little right. less. Well, uh, probably about um, 20 minutes before, so I'll start casting spells, like namely Comprehend Languages, um, so that I have that at least for an hour when I'm there. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I would do. Uh, see, it only lasts 10 minutes. We don't have nothing they gave us on the ship was magical, right? I assume I would probably check that. On the ship you have now? Yeah. No. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I don't see, yeah, casting anything else. We probably won't need Featherfall, so I won't take that. Uh, probably not. Okay. I'm ready if you guys are. Okay. <clears throat> so you approach. Um, you take kind of a direct route, the same route you basically took leaving the compound. <clears throat> Get pretty close. Oh. Um, did, did we bring back the um, big bull, the the dead bull's body, the um, leader Would you body? Like yeah. Okay. They let you. No problem. At yes, least we have proof that he's dead, and it wasn't our doing. Okay. You bring back a meat bra a body, riddled with holes from the uh, from the bolts. From the crossbows, where they got shot lots of times, nine times, I believe. Okay, <clears throat> so you head out to uh, you get. Let me go to the right one for you here. Hold on. All right, switch over the map here. Ooh, new map time. It's not a new map, it's the same map, but... Yeah. Well, new, as in... So, this is you here. This little boat. In the upper left corner. Heading down the same path. Um, you move along. Just tell me if you do anything as we move along. And um, you kind of look at the, the compound as you're passing. And uh, you do notice that there are beast folk up on the walls, kind of guarding, as they were before. Um, obviously, your first trip here was kind of middle of the night, and you didn't see anybody. But there are, there are in fact, beast folk that are on guard at the up, up top, kind of a, on the catwalks along the, the top area there. tender boats were and where they were kind of stationed. The main boat kind of pulls up here where it is. Um, all of you can make a perception in the tower for me, please. You say perception, huh? 
plus four. Alundo, hmm. um, as the boat is coming up and starting to, to take anchor, uh, coming to a stop, furling the sails, furling up the sails and uh, dropping anchor, you notice kind of um, directly off the, the, the bow, just around the edge of the island, something that looks very, very odd. Um, you notice a ship. It's docked pretty close to the to the actual island itself in relatively shallow water, um, and the ship is extremely familiar to you. It appears to be the Golden Harpy. Oh, that's our ship, isn't it? It is. Ooh. Ouch. <laughs> Okay, this could be a thorn in our side. I don't know if you let the rest of them know, or yes, yes, I let them know. Okay. I only let the not the whole crew, but the yeah, I figured. And I go, yeah. why is that? Did uh, you didn't even know who captured you? Right? Is that right? What would you say? <laughs> What? You said it's going to be a thorn in our sides, and I go, why is that? You didn't even know who had captured you before, right? No, I, our ship has been captured by them. Oh, it's our ship? Yes. You're hoping you've gotten away. Yes. I had thought it was the ship that you were captured on. I didn't notice which that it was ours. Yes, it, that, that's our ship. Really, Gordon Harpy, you don't remember? You're the captain. <laughs> I didn't I obviously did not see it yet. Yeah, you no, didn't see I, it. I did say it was the Golden right. Harpy. You, you, you pointed out, though, and now they, they do, in so fact. I start looking. What is our ship doing there? Yes, uh, <laughs> and like I said, this is a problem. Well, I, and I kind of just say this to uh, Alundo and Owen. Well, they'll be ready to take us away when, uh, when everything's done here. Uh, mm. I'm going to... How far away are they? How far away are who? Uh, as our ship. Uh, so we're kind of tucked around the corner. You can just kind of make out the the bow of it there. So um, each one of those squares, let me look again because I don't remember. Uh, <clears throat> is 30 feet. So what is that? Can you measure it? Dang, I wish I could get over there and take a look. I don't think I can. <clears throat> Where the hell's the measure tool? Oh, there it is. Uh, 200 and 300 feet. You can just kind of make out the bow of it, but it's pretty distinct. Definitely enough that you, uh, you know it's over your ship. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, we have a problem. Uh, some of our crew members are captured or killed. Mm -hmm. It's not good. No. Well, we don't know that's the case yet. We'll, we'll have to find out. Well, uh, there's not much else they'd be doing there. Well, uh, they, they do. Uh, what's happening, and, and uh, you notice that the gates open and a, um, few minotaurs, looks like three minotaurs and a dozen beast folk come out um, and move their way down to the docks. Okay. Uh, as they're moving their way down, uh, you see that they uh, start to untie the tender boats. One of the minotaurs climbs in and rows over to the, rows over to the, to the, your boat. Um, they take three tender boats and head over to you and leaving the beast folk on the on the dock. Uh, all the beast folks are leaving on the dock. Yeah, the beast folk that walked out of the out of the compound with them are all on the dock. Okay. 
And then so he's uh, he's grabbing. Who is he grabbing? Uh, Minotaur's not grabbing anybody. He's there. There's three Minotaurs, one in each of the tender boats, and they're heading to your ship right now to to dock up with it. Okay. To be well, expected. Let him duck. Yep. They come over. Uh, the beast folk on board take normal action, drop her lines over to the, the Minotaurs, and they climb aboard. Where do you have Amit's body, by the way? Is it on deck, below deck? Where do you have it? Uh, we'll below put deck. it oh, yeah, below deck. Cover it up. Okay. Yeah, okay. Right in an uh, old sail or something. Okay. Yep. So, uh, I climb aboard, and, uh, one of the mentors looks at you and says, where's a mitt? <clears throat> uh, he died. He fell. Died? Yes, he's down below. They look but around at all the beef. We were... and all the beast folk without, they look around at all the beast folk without collars and they immediately draw. One of them draws, and draws the axe. The other two, it's the same thing. They draw their axes and look around nervously. Wait, no, no, we've come here, we've, we've actually did it. We've got the head of the, what was the, 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 uh, Flaming Fist leader, his name? Leeward Hillock, he's the lieutenant commander. Leeward Hillock, and we did it ourselves, and we have a present to give Buddha. This guy's head, and we also bring back more of his slaves, who wish to take part in his, uh, for his service. They, as you say that, the beast folk on the on the deck actually drop to their knees, and they extend their hands out, the two hands together, kind of in front. Yes, you see, see just, just what they're doing. You can see the minotaurs, they start to relax a bit, not putting away the axes, but drop it down. And we're to believe that you took care of all these, of the flaming fists... Alone. And well, not all of them. I mean, they're, they're huge, but we took care of their device to destroy the ships. You won't be seeing that anymore. And we took out the commander. There was a couple more troops on that island, but the device has been destroyed. There's these big giant mountains that would take out the ships. We found them. As well as these other captors on the island. This is... Come along, then. He steps to the side. Uh, we request that we wish to give this to to Buddha ourselves. I'm sure he'll be proud and bring it along then. This okay, is... I bring along the box of the head. Okay. Yeah, I'll just say I'm, Owen and I are kind of carrying it, walking behind Alundo. Mm -hmm. It's um, got. So you guys climb into. The, I'm assuming climb into the same. Tinder boat, or do you guys get different ones, or all the same? Well, you know what it what I <laughs> happens to me when it comes to climbing into boats. I need to go to jump. first. You're gonna jump in, yeah. I mean, maybe maybe I'll I'll get close enough that I don't sink the boat, but I'm not okay. gonna jump into it. You've you've had enough practice at this point with you know since the seas are relatively calm and there's no pressure, you 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 drop down onto it without too much problem and, and get aboard. So you get a little bit of a dirty look from one of the minotaurs with you unnecessarily jumping, but he doesn't say anything. I expect right. bad luck to be have one foot in one uh, world and one foot in another. Mm -hmm. You got to commit. He just <laughs> he just kind of narrows his eyes and doesn't say anything. So. Hey, I'm kind of I'm kind of beat, guys. Could you guys just uh, play my character for the night? Yeah, just uh, obviously I I don't have plans to do anything surprising unless shit goes bad when we when we try to get Boda to open this. You know, I'm sure I would do just what you would think, try any way possible to get him to open it. And, uh, you know, if shit goes bad, you know, my guy would, would probably be ready to fight and uh, and motivate the Beastmasters to fight. But that all depends on how bad it goes. If it goes bad and we don't have to, I would try not to. <laughs> you know, if we have a shot, if we have a shot, I'd probably try to fight. If uh, if it goes bad and, uh, and we can still uh, get out of it with our lives, I'd probably try that way, too. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Thanks, guys. Good night. I'll see you. Good night. Bye. Yep. All right. So you guys pile into the tender boats, and uh, they take you ashore. Um, 
the two tender boats that are there, the other two um, you see are, as you can look over your shoulder as you're heading to shore, and you notice that uh, the beast folk are being loaded into that as well um, and moved uh, to the dock. So you guys make it ashore, and uh, Minotaur stops, and uh, a contingent of beast folk fallen with you as well. Looks like about five uh, of what was there um, with you, and you guys start to head inside again kind of scanning your your surroundings as you walk through walking around you notice that the beast folk are are being collected on the dock and the ones that uh have collars are now have weapons raised and are kind of encircling the ones that uh that do not have collars they're holding and they're holding them on the on the dock okay <clears throat> All right, so you walk inside. Uh, the gates, again, swing open. And uh, it's pretty much the same scene you saw before. Um, not a whole lot has changed on the interior. You see a lot of beast folk running running about a bun with normal day-to-day -day kind of activities. Um, everything from clothing that needs to be washed to, to food tra being transported from place to place to um, a few other things. The one thing you didn't notice before Kind of in the far south down here in this corner over here, um, there appears to be um, a platform that's been erected there. Uh, it looks to be it's about uh, 10 foot wide by about 20 feet long. It's about five feet off the ground. There's a set of stairs that leave up to it, and it's just a wooden platform that's sitting there. You guys can insight if you'd like to to see if maybe you can get an idea as to what it might be used for. I'd be interested to think about that for a half second. Sure. Yeah. Guillotine or something? I don't know. Well, it's only five feet off the ground. I have an idea. I will ask the person in front of me and say, <laughs> hey, what's that over there? I thought I rolled it, but it didn't work. I didn't see it. <laughs> didn't work either way. You have not seen one of these in a book anywhere. That it's just not clicking mm -hmm. with you for some reason. You're not sure what that would potentially be. <laughs> uh, you ask one of the beast folk, or you ask the Minotaur. What do you, who do you ask? <clears throat> okay. yes. The Minotaur looks over his shoulder and says, "You've never seen a slaver's platform before. How do you think we sell these slaves?" Uh, uh, I was always, uh, you know, never really around it, so. Uh, you'll you'll get the show later. Mm. All right then. Uh, okay, so he walks you over, and they walk you over to the central chamber, the one that you guys have have seen before. And uh, let me get you the right spot here. <clears throat> Such a pain in the ass sometimes. Yeah, moving them on. They don't. You gotta it move doesn't on. click over like it's supposed to. Sometimes I don't know uh, why. It's just weird. Maybe it's because I'm not doing something right. Probably user error would be my guess. Yeah, sometimes. All right. There we go. Um. So you walk in, and um, just so that you guys remember. Um, they bring you to almost the same position you had before. So they bring you in through these main doors here, across the once fine runner carpeting in the center, past the columns that are ornately carved with bovine heroes in various poses that obviously have been added more recently than when this was originally built. And Boda is sitting in his chair with his, with a small red fire drake at his side that he is stroking, oh, so casually as you walk in. And he says, my friends, I'm so glad to see you. It's amazing that you've, you've been, you've been able to accomplish what I've been told you have in such a short time. I, I did not believe that you, one that I'd, more likely see you than not, and it's two that you'd be in one piece. 
<laughs> yes, I, I suspect maybe you're trying to send us to our death, but as you'll find, we're much more cunning and valuable to you alive than dead. As you've said, and perhaps you are right, it's, uh, I do like a good surprise. It's, uh, it's, it is rarity in this line of work. Most of the time, it's the same old, same old. People come in, people get sold, people die. It's the normal yes. day to day. Um, I look at Owen and, and Strider and probably whispers there too. And I'm like, um, we, we actually brought you a gift. I think you'll be very pleased. Well, it's a spoil of the war more than a gift. I'm okay. Well, and, I mean, to tell you the truth, it's quite the gift. We also brought you back your past former slaves who wish to continue their service. And are they with us, the other beastmen? No, they're not there. Um, they're the ones that uh, you assume that they're probably still being rounded up on the dock. Yes, they yes, really we would like it. to get them. He kind of strokes his strokes his face a bit, and he says, "You know, it's it's a funny thing about spoils of war and about deeds that have been done. Like, is there anything else that uh, you may want to tell me about your your trip and about your your adventures over the past week or so?" Um. I'm gonna write. I'm gonna the... roll insight. This guy knows. A little, it seems like he knows a little bit more than he's leading on. So. Yeah, roll the tower for me. Okay. Yes. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, let me find out what my plus two. It is a plus two. Okay. Um, because I just rolled it. That's how you know. Uh. Um. Yeah, you think he might be leading you, but you don't really get. Anything from him specifically? He's just a weirdo, maybe. Hmm. Yes. Well, would you like to tell us? Or would you like us to tell us everything step by step? Or you know, would you like to see the gift we brought you? <laughs> it's quite good. It's, but it's not a gift. It, I mean, it's. I mean, he waves his hand. He says, "Yes, yes, we'll get to that. I understand. Trying to trying to bribe the ones that that controls you." Well, here, in, in that bad. case, I'll just set it down here. I'll go bring it uh, towards. I'll go bring it up to him, and I I kneel. This is a gift. You will like this. It is the head of. Well, you'll find out. <laughs> he says, "Yes, yes, yes." A whisper says, does. A whisper does quite good work. And I just leave it by his feet. Okay. And I walk off. <laughs> All right. I walk yeah, back don't... to my position with the other people. We, we, yeah, they, they motion you back to, to your kneeling position there. He says, ah, it's very interesting you know, to, uh, that that uh, that you're able to accomplish so much with so little. I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed. I'm not little. I'm quite large, thank you. Well, uh, yes, to tell you the my truth, literal friend, we, were, my literal friend. we were actually captured at first. Really? Yes. We, la we we figured out that these attacks were coming from something ashore. We went ashore, and we did a search party when we were captured. And we found some kind of magical thing, and um, I kind of look at Owen, and, well, um, I touched it, and it went off a boom, and... It all knocked us out, and don't, don't, we're surrounded. Oh, I touched it. I touched it. He's yeah. just try, trying to protect me. I was stupid. I did it. Uh, you're not stupid uh, at all. But and, and then we were actually captured, and we thought we were done for. But through Whisper's mm, skills, we were able to escape. At least some of us. And we are able to find this commander, and we were able to put him out of his misery. It was quite uh, something. Interesting. Well, it oh. is interesting about how, how this has all come together. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's perplexing to me, actually. It's, uh, I, I'm pleasantly surprised. Don't, don't get me wrong. It's, uh, it's one of those things that, uh, that I just can't seem to wrap my head around. But, uh, no matter. Well, 
Yeah, you won't believe who it is we had to kill the commander and all. Hmm. And should... what did you say the commander's name was again? Uh, why don't you take a look? If you recognize him, he's in the box. Really? Yes. How <laughs> wonderful. I thought you would appreciate well... that seeing your taste for blood before. It was uh, quite amusing. My palms are like sweating. <laughs> he snaps his fingers and points it at one of the minotaurs. He no, says, no, no, don't open it. You should open it because you are, you are the king after all. It's here. I'll, I can open it if he's scared too. I can do it. Uh, no. I know he's scared. I can do it. I can do ah. it. I like that. Uh, let's see. <laughs> that was a good move, man. <laughs> Reverse psychology there. Very good job. Let me think. What would that? What would he roll for that? That would be. Would it be intimidation? It'd be. It'd be uh, yeah. It'd probably persuasion deception. Probably, but, right? probably persuasion. Oh, it would be deception because it's like a. Oh, deception! Yeah, trick yeah. him into doing it, right? Yeah, we'll do a we'll do a versus roll. For it's probably. Deception. I'm guessing it's advantage for Owen or whoever's rolling. Yeah, it, yeah, rolling yeah. It. Totally. Totally, totally. Um, you probably should not roll it because you got a negative, don't you? <laughs> No, no, I just no. have zero. Oh, okay, that's fine. I'm not negatively charismatic. I'm just regular. And you have inspiration. Um, I have inspiration. Yeah. So, you know, if you miss it, we have a couple chances. That would be, let me see. Um, so that's just charisma, right? So it would just be whatever his bonus to charisma is mm -hmm. for that. Okay, so he gets a plus two. I'm just going to roll this in the open because why not? Yeah, because we'll, we'll we'll probably know if he opens it or not. What? Oh, what did he get? <laughs> oh, that's 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 insane. I literally cannot beat that. <laughs> that's... But insane. You can try. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you can't get a higher than twenty-two. You can always <laughs> roll <a> one. <laughs> <laughs> in your direction. Okay, okay. Um, as as he does that, as 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 both as as the one of the minotaur goes open it, I'm gonna just walk it right on up there, and I'm just gonna grab the box. Nobody gets to open it then. Jeez, spoil sports. Minotaur <laughs> <laughs> reaches out for it with two hands and sees you grab it out of his hands, and he's yeah. shocked. He doesn't know what to do. He looks at Boda, and Boda kind of just shrugs a bit, and he says. So strange. Uh, this was a gift to you. <sighs> he he wasn't gonna let us go, even if we if, if we gave him that. So it doesn't matter. Kind of narrows his eyes. He says, "Give me the box, then. Give it to me. Fine. If you want me to open it so badly, give it here." I don't. I don't. It. it the the mood is over now. It's wrong. <sighs> Fine. I put it on the ground and I, I slide it over to him, <laughs> and then I, I back up, because <laughs> we don't want to be near this shit. Yeah, you know, let's see how close you guys are. Hold on a second. Uh, I want to see. So each one of those is ten feet for those squares. So I think you guys are within that range. Let me see. I use uh, maybe prejudice station to move it along, give it a gust You're of wind or something. Yeah, you guys are gonna be within that range because right. There's 15 feet. It is. It is strapped up. <laughs> it is. True. So he looks at you and he says, "So you really want me to open this box, huh?" Oh, well, let's, let's see who's in here. He says. So he he reaches to his side. He pulls out a dagger, cuts the belt. Um, the I'm. Lid. I'm going I'm, to walk away. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna stay where I am. Okay. Wait, are you what, within that range? I think so. Oh, you really you are, are actually. So, takes the lid and flips it open, and nothing happens. Oh no! He looks inside the box, and he says. Some kind of joke. 
Wait, I, I do like a good joke from time to time, but I'm not really sure how this makes any sense. And he holds it up, he turns the box towards you, and there's nothing in it. Absolutely nothing in the box. He says, you know, I like a good joke, too. What? He says, bring him. And the door over on the side uh, opens up. Someone betrayed us. And you see two minotaurs have a well-beaten Zetrix strung between them. He is gagged, his hands bound behind him, and he is littered with wounds across his chest and body, soaking directly through his robes. And he brings in Zetrix and tosses him on the ground, kind of to the side, over here, the side of the throne room. And he motions with his hand, and he says, You know the funny thing about those collars that you wear around your neck? I make sure that all of the slaves that are in my presence, have or have ever been in my presence, are bound to me. And, you know, do you remember when you were a bit insolent last time we spoke? Mm, yes. There was no reaction when I tried to teach you a lesson. And that struck me as a bit odd. So, with a little bit of digging, I found out who you were bound to. Of course you know who that is. Isn't that right, Zetrix? You can see that he lifts his head a little bit and then puts his eyes back to the ground and lays back down on the concrete. This is so... You know, it's, it's, it's funny when I've got a plot to overthrow me in my midst. I tend to go along with it to see exactly how far it goes. And this one ran pretty deep. So now that I know that you're all involved in a plot to overthrow and kill me, how should I dispose of you? You're obviously resourceful, as you stated, but you're also quite a problem. And I don't deal with problems very well. So, hmm. Zetrix, should you take care of them like a good boy? Or should we kill them the old-fashioned way? What do you think? Ooh, what's the old-fashioned way? <laughs> <laughs> How chuckled. beat up is Zetrix here? I'm going to insight check him. Drag the finger across his throat. What's that? He said he chuckles a little bit, and he just drags his finger across his throat for Owen. So. Um, how beat up is Zetrix, you said? Yeah. He's in a pretty bad way. Um, like his one, one eye is one hit point way. Yeah, I'm like real bad. His one eye is swollen shut. You can have, you can tell he has difficulty holding his head up, kind of thing. Um, he's in real bad shape. I tell you how I deal with a traitor. I'm gonna firebolt him. <laughs> 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 I'm just gonna just do it. Is it a good this is Zetrix. Yeah, Zetrix. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because if we kill him, we become unbound, and then at least we're free <laughs> to do something. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um. So you, um, let's do this. Let's roll this real quick before you do that real sure. quick. Uh, let's roll initiatives real, real quick. Just because there may be something that happens here. It may not. God damn it. Uh. Fuck. <laughs> it's not what I want. I, I might use inspiration to roll again. I think I will. Because this will be important to be first. Yeah, I'll take that. Please. Why did that? Oh, I didn't have him highlighted. I hate that. I don't know why it makes you do that. That just annoys me. Computer programs. I don't know why it makes you do that. This guy's tricky. Tricky, tricky, tricky. Tricky trickster. Surprised the box didn't go off, though. Hmm. Now, why didn't it do that? That's weird. Yeah. 
<laughs> that means that means he's working with someone else with uh with them. Or there's an anti magic field in here. Oh, there might be. You're right. <laughs> you never know. You never know. You know no. That means my spell wouldn't go off. We'll see what happens when you go try and cast it. All right. Uh, did you roll yours? Oh, you did roll yours, Owen. Um, let me get the rest of these guys for the hell of it. That's... Uh, whispers there... Boom, 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 boom. Nice roll. Hmm. Nice roll. And a North Strider. I don't know. I can't see that small. That's oh, and there's Strider. Keep going there. Yep. Okay. Is that everybody? I think it is, right? Uh, let me see. Don't know. Uh, Why did your whisper? There's Owen. Uh, mine didn't. Po oh, because I'm not selected on him, and I wrote That's it. Right. So let me let me select that. I gotta select on my token and then roll it. Yeah, it doesn't matter. We're just change it twenty three. That's what you got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You just change it. Am I even in the list? I'm probably not in there. No, I'm going to add you. Hold on a second. I, I can just roll it again and then change it. It's fine. I got it. All right, cool. All right. Very good. Okay, uh, so you and Strider go at exactly the same time, actually. Huh. Uh, so go ahead. What, what would you do? I'm going to firebolt his ass if the firebolt goes off. Uh, Zintrix. Okay. You go to cast it. And you know you went through the motions properly. Yeah. You absolutely are positive, and it fizzles yeah. right there on the spot. That's why and I didn't Boda, work. Boda just giggles. <laughs> you are a crafty one and a brave or stupid one as well. Well, the old-fashioned way might be fun, but it's much faster to do it. With the noose, Zetrix. He looks in that direction. Strider. What would Strider do? Strider would kill some shit. I think he probably would run that way, right? Yeah. I probably should put out a token for that, then. Um... <laughs> Um, and then we'll do, let's see if this lets me do it the right way or not. Yeah. All right. So there's this one I'm going to put is skull and crossbones. Oh, that's really a big skull and crossbones. Right, never mind. The the red dot is Z tricks. Where's that one? Oops. That one, and then there's the other Minotaur. There are entirely too many Minotaurs in this room. <laughs> A lot of minotaurs here. Huh? Yes. Those are the two that drug out. Z-Trix dropped them at the ground there. And then uh, 
obviously there's Alundo. Um, so yeah, so who's would Alundo attack? Would you say? See, let's. I was firing at Citrix. Yeah, you're not. Well, he's not going to know who you're firing at, though. It's just going to yeah. get fizzled. So let's do. We'll make it. We'll say odd. So you guys are obviously. He's a pretty smart guy, though, isn't he? Let me see. Is he smart? Is he smart? <laughs> Is he smart? Is he smart? Is he smart enough to know that that's who we should attack, or is he uh, just going to attack Boda because he's right in front of him and he's pissed off? Let me see. He's got an average intelligence of 11, so he's not very smart. He's just kind of normally smart. Um, I'll just I'll just say, Zetra should die. Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> that's fine. Yeah, that's, we can have him run that way and attack them. That's that's cool. Um, he's kind of prone. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So um, he heads off running in that direction. He can get there no problem. Uh, let's see. Uh, cool. So he runs that way, and I guess he's just going to make an attack roll. You guess somebody else want to roll him? You guys have control of him, right? Uh, can he just shoot an arrow? Uh, yeah, you could do that too, sure. Yeah, I don't think he'd want to run over there, shoot an arrow from where we're at. True. We can just Very run true. off after he dies. <laughs> <Or something. laughs> yeah, oh, you want us to make it? Uh... Oh, yeah, let me, you want let me, me to, see if I, I can uh, bring up his character sheet. Uh, where is he? Oh, I he doesn't. Yeah, I don't see him on the thing. So I'll just I'll just give you a twenty sider and you just tell me what his bonus is. Okay. Because he doesn't show up on my my character list at all. Um. Twelve. If he's restrained, he has advantage on the roll. He's if, not restrained. He's, he's just, just grappled. He is prone, then. though. Oh, then he has advantage. So oh, no, advantage. actually, he has disadvantage if he's prone. For yeah, long he's, range, he's, he has disadvantage. Um, well, then yeah, he's landing. He might just walk up to him and slice him, <laughs> I guess, <laughs> if he's on the ground. But whatever, doesn't matter. Shoots an arrow. Doesn't matter what he get. Um, he has disadvantage Whoa. if he shoots an arrow. So, for prone. You have All right. So yeah, roll again. Hold. So he's got disadvantage because he didn't want to approach. That's fine. No big deal. Whatever. Same number. Same, Same number. Uh, what's his armor class? Let me look. He's probably got what eighteen or higher. Yeah, he does. Yeah, so that's a mess. Ching, bounces off the concrete. Oh, he misses? Damn. Uh -huh. Shit, that guy has like a 30 armor class. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. That is really high. Ting! Oh, boy. <laughs> These are issues. Yeah, well, you're not really sure as to why he even missed, to be honest, so. Oh, there's, there's stuff in here. Yep. Shit, we can't do anything in here. <laughs> uh, cool. So, what what else do you want him to do? Anything else, or no? We just uh, stand back. <laughs> oh, and you are up. Uh, I don't really understand what's going on. <laughs> so I'm going to hold action. Okay. Uh, with my just my hand near my crossbow. Not sure what's going on. Okay. All right. Uh, it is Whisper's turn. Uh, what do you think Whisper would do? He'd probably uh, wait. He'd probably. I think he'd probably try to hide behind one of the pillars or something. Maybe. I yeah, don't know. yeah. He might. He might Should... do that. Yeah. yeah. 
duck behind it and try and do that. I'll roll his hide roll, that's fine. Which is what, just a stealth roll? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think I have I have his character sheet so I can roll it for you if you want. Oh, good. Yeah, that's fine. Oops, I should have did it in the tower. It's fine. <laughs> he feels like he's pretty well hidden. Mm -hmm. So you would duck behind this pillar over here. <laughs> he's got obnoxious stats. Yeah, he does, yeah. He's Mark. He what? always has obnoxious stats. No doubt. No. Yep. Uh, cool, okay. And then it is the Fire Drake's turn. Um, and you guys are obviously completely perplexed with everything that's happening. Magic's not working for whatever reason. A shot that clearly should have hit on a prone, on a prone character there that's you know completely disabled missed. And uh, so you're you're kind of frantically looking about the place. And you, notice, you you notice that the the Drake that was sitting pretty docilely up until just a second ago perks its head up. Seems to be looking around intently and then bolts out the front doors. Blows past actually Strider's not I guess yeah, he didn't really move. Blows past Strider, almost knocking him down at mm. at what appears to be the full speed that this Drake can, can travel. And Boda stands up from his chair that he was sitting in and he says, Sheila, where are you going? Come back here. And she bolts knocking the doors completely open and takes off out and seems to be gone. Hmm. Huh. Oh, you lost your bird. <laughs> yes, it seems you lost your pet. So now what? You have this space called magic. Yep, we can't cast magic. We can't shoot our weapons. Now what? Yeah, uh, so, Boda's I'm gonna send turn. my bat out there to take a look at what this other thing is doing, if that's possible. Okay. Yep, you send the bat out, no problem. I don't know if we're in initiative or not, or what. Oh. It doesn't matter. He's gonna talk here in a second. Um, yeah. So you send the bat out, and the Drake seems to be at again as fast as you've ever seen a Drake travel or ever could imagine travel. Heads out through the gate, heads out through out through the courtyard, out through the main gate, runs and runs straight out into the water and just dives under the water and is gone. Like gone. Not there, not there at all. Uh, I'm gonna start stepping back. <laughs> this isn't man, this isn't sold well. You start backing away. Ugh. And Botus says, You really think that's going to save you? I just demonstrated what what we have capability wise and you think that running is going to work he starts laughing he says well Zetrix, do your worst because it's time and just as that happens you hear a tremendous bellow like nothing you've ever heard before picture godzilla from the 1980s movie mm -hmm. Erupting. Oh no, it's a dragon nowhere. turtle! No! <laughs> and it's so loud that you all have to cover your ears because it's it's causing you pain. And when you finally pull your hands away, you hear an extremely booming, booming pulse. That was a <laughs> With a very, very slight lilt to it, say. I allow you to live, and this is what you do? This is how you pay tribute to me? Now you shall pay. And well, at least somebody's mad out there. We'll leave it right there, I think. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> we, we're in the middle of something, guys. We're in the middle of the soup. Out of the, <laughs> out of the frying pan into the fire. <laughs> There's a, f a famous mage I know. In one of his quotes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's pretty cool, man. Well, we shall see what happens next time. Are we gonna try to play next Sunday?
See if people are around. As usual. Good by me, but I don't know for you guys, but I should be around. Depends on what time. I have a party that starts at three in the afternoon. So yeah. I should be back. Yeah, whatever. We'll figure it out. It's Christmas oh, party time. I was gonna I say, say stop. It's gonna happen. Yeah. We're 